Welcome back to the Monolith Film Podcast, the Monolith Film Club. We're back. Uh, special guest today, Halen. Say hello. Hello. Fan um, favorite, returning fan favorite. Halen. Well, yeah, what have you done with, you've, we did her, we did Joshy. Joshy. Yeah. yeah. Is that it? Years ago. Yeah, yeah back at the Concordia, the Concordia yeah. Archives. This is your first time on video, right? It's season one of the podcast. Mm-hmm. You never, you never zoomed with us? Never zoomed. You want to, bl- you want to blur your face? Yeah, it'd be okay. Goodbye, Pete. Pete. <laughs> what, uh, what is that it though? Just Joshy and her? Joshy, her, and Tropical Malady. I did. Tropical oh, Malady. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's another fucking fan favorite. Yeah. We, we got some good views on that one. Mm. So, um, what are we doing today? Me? Yeah. What house, are we doing today? How Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses. Yes, sir. Yeah. Part yeah. of the series, the one Firefly the trilogy. The the first one, uh, House of a Thousand Corpses, came out in two thousand three. Three. Yep. Two thousand three. Quick synops. Um, it's about uh, Dwight Schrute <laughs> and his friend, the host of the Video Game Awards, and their girlfriends. They're driving across country, writing a book about uh, roadside attractions. All the crazy shit you see when you're driving cross country. Yep. There you go. I don't drive. I don't do. I don't drive. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> if you did, <laughs> but I. But I don't. <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> um, yeah, and they get fucked up by a family. Uh, they hear about a, a local legend, Dr. <laughs> Satan. They go to investigate for the sake of their book. They get kidnapped and tortured and killed by uh, this fucked up, hick American family. And that's pretty much it. Very a, a la Rob Zombie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, this was his, one of his first. I think it is this, was his first. Yeah. this was his first. Yeah. Movie, yeah. This, this is a classic in my mind, this movie. Oh, yeah. 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 100%. We we've all seen it before. Mm-hmm. You want to quick quick? Do you, do you remember your first impression? Do you remember the first time you this watched was, it? I've seen this movie probably thirty something times. Oh yeah. This when I was really? eleven years old, yeah. this was the number one movie ever, dude. Really? I watched this so many fucking times. This movie, it was like an old friend, you know, rewatching it. Well, I only know Rob Zombie because of you. Oh yeah, I was so into this fucking movie. This, <clears> yeah. <throat> so yeah, you I loved it from the get go. Yeah, 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 from the get. Okay. I'll talk more later about the. Uh, <clears throat> My relationship with it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, Haven, was your first time watching it with me a year ago? Yeah. And what was your first impression back then? Um, it was cool. It was gory. It was everything I wanted it to be, I think. I, I had heard of Rob Zombie so many times before. And I know that he had done, like, slasher horror flicks like that. But uh, I think it's the only reason I watched it. Because I heard it was a trilogy. And I'd heard of all three movies separately. Mm. And now that I knew that they were... A trilogy with each other. Yeah, I wanted to get into it. So you had never seen like even his Halloween reboot. You never seen, seen anything. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Anything, yeah. Really? Never, okay. never. Was it? This wasn't the first Rob Zombie movie ever. This was the first. Oh yeah. Ever seen That's a good okay. way to start then. Yeah. 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 Probably. Great. Good. Great place start. to start. Yeah. 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 Dante, well, when was your first? Oh, I was probably a teenager. Yeah. And I was probably high as fuck. <laughs> um, I don't really remember too much of it from the first time. I remember liking it. Yeah. Uh, it was like, it was like, the, it's the, it, when I, when I first saw it, I was like, it was a shitty horror movie. Oh yeah? But like, in a good way. Oh, you know, okay, right. like, like one of those yeah, B-campy yeah. horror movies. Right. Mm-hmm. But like, when I first saw it, I was like, this is the penultimate one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think, I think my first time was probably around the same age as you, like, yeah. around 11, I remember mm-hmm. watching it with my brother. I don't remember what I thought, but I, I mean, knowing me, I probably loved it. Mm-hmm. But I've seen it, maybe not 30 times, but I've seen it a handful of times now. I was zoned in on this fucking movie. Yeah. Too. Like this was it, this movie. Damn, it's 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 definitely my favorite. Have it on DVD I that? do. Yeah. I have a double feature of That's this cool. and uh, Double Rejects. That's awesome, yeah. <laughs> um, I I think it is my favorite Rob Zombie movie though. Mm-hmm. And I I have you've seen the you've seen his his Halloween reboot. Yeah, it's better than that. I think I think his Halloween reboot is is pretty good. Might be my favorite yeah. Halloween movie. The first one, yeah. yeah Other the than the first one, one? Sick. like I don't know, dude. Rob Zombie's Halloween is. On par with the first one, with Carpenter's, I think. Yeah, yeah. it's fucking it's better. better. Yeah, Carpenter's kind of fucking whatever. I think I can't, I can't deny the legacy that Carpenter's but Halloween thing, created. But it's yeah, but it's like it's made in the eighties. Yeah, watching it through and, our lens yeah. now. Yeah, it's whatever. But like mm-hmm. Rob Zombie, like Rob Zombie's just the perfect guy to make a Halloween movie. No, dude, it's so Rob. sick. His his Halloween movie is so fucking sick. But yeah. th- this movie, House with Thousand Corpses, is also very very cool. Also takes place on Halloween. Also takes place on Halloween. Yep. Yeah, that's true. I wonder if, I because John Carpenter's original plan for Halloween 
was that each sequel would be an in, like an anthology series, right? Mm -hmm. Each sequel would be a different story, but they would all be set on Halloween. Mm -hmm. I wonder if House of a Thousand Corpses was Rob Zombie's pitch for that concept. I bet he has I don't think so. Mind. I mean, all this stuff is probably in his head. But... Yeah, I don't mean I don't mean on purpose, but like subconscious. Oh, yeah. maybe yeah. Because for sure, Halloween's a huge influence on him. I mean, he yeah. remade it for a reason, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, but I love this movie too. I, yeah. I think uh, it fucks, man. Dude, dude, it's just so good. When it uh, it's so it's so much of what it is. Yeah. Without mm -hmm. without falling into satire. It's still kind of satire. That's that's enough. enough. Yeah. Like it's just like, it's just the perfect line of satire in the yeah, series. Because exactly. yeah. yeah. if you watch it and you're not a movie guy, you're not gonna think it's satire. Yeah. But if you watch enough movies, you're gonna be like, okay. Yeah. He's a fucking moron. Like I love it. <laughs> it's fucking good. When uh, when I was ten or eleven, when I saw this movie for the first time, I think this was the movie that kind of got me into movies. Oh so, yeah, really? yeah. Because oh. before this, I'd be watching whatever fucking normal Jurassic Park or something you watch when you're ten years old, and then I saw fucking this. I was like, this is like different a bit. Yeah. What the yeah. fuck? It's a little weird. What's the little inverted? Yeah. What's the breaks scene, in yeah. between the scenes? What the my fuck? my movie like that is Spirited Away. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't pinpoint when I got into movies. I think it was in CJF. I took a film studies course, mm -hmm. and I watched Donnie Darko. It was the second time I watched Donnie Darko. That might have been the one where I like, where I was like, oh okay, I I get it now. Okay. But I think what really solidified that for me was during that class, I watched all of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Okay. I would just go home after school and just watch one, and then the next day I'd watch the next one. That's and fun. I watched the entire series in like two weeks or something like that. Yeah. And then I then I think that's when I really got into horror and like going mm -hmm. through the classics and and really diving deep in the genre i think I, i've always liked horror but that's when i really started to me i think i started liking horror i was in high school like the the spirit of the way thing i watched when i was a kid mm -hmm. okay and i think that's like the moment where i became an artist because mm -hmm. i was like oh all this other shit you know yeah but horror movies there was um I, i'm sure you guys know the the angry video game nerd no okay well it was this youtuber right pretty fucking big and he did like video game he was, like, the original video game YouTuber, and he talked about, like, his old games, and he was, like... like playthroughs? No, he was just, like, reviewing shit games. Okay. Like, he was us for video games. Okay. But, like, he was, like, swearing all the time at yeah. early days of YouTube, and everyone... I'm not angry. <laughs> no, 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 but he, he was. He was. Anyways. <laughs> and he had another, he had another uh, channel called Cinemassacre, where he talked about movies and shit, and campy horror movies and stuff like that, and that's, that's when I really got into movies in high school, yeah, cool. when I was watching that shit. Hmm. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I guess we all kind of answered it at the same time, but my next question was going to be, does it hold up now? Oh, yeah. Well, that's the funny thing, though, I found. Because, like, I'd seen it as a kid a yeah. million fucking times. Didn't watch it for ten years or something. Yeah. Watched it again maybe two or three years ago, and I was like, dude, this movie fucking sucks. Dude. Uh, yeah. This movie stinks, dude. It's so fucking stupid. What's with all the <laughs> dumb shit? And then I watched it again fucking two days ago. I was like, dude, this is the best movie all yeah. around. <laughs> <laughs> fucking rocks, dude. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, it's, honestly, a similar thing happened to me, mm -hmm. too. I, I, when I watched it years ago when I was a kid, I remember thinking, like, dude, this is the fucking, this is the best, you know? And then I wa when we watched it yeah. for your first time uh, a year ago, I remember being disappointed. Mm. And then we watched it again last night, and I was like, dude, this fucking rules. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is so good. This is so good. It's the best. I, yeah. I think it's fucking awesome. Like, it's, I love this movie. It's cool because. I, especially for horror movies like there's such tropes that they follow and it's just so repeated that like this movie was so cool because of those weird interludes like with like the mm -hmm. inverted color schemes and stuff like this is a really cool like like it was just a really cool just the, the ways that he presented everything was like really cool like it was a, it was a good movie it's different like it's di like the way it's made is different from other yeah. movies especially Completely. me going from watching like Conjuring like that's my experience of a horror movie to yeah. this like this is cool like this is like A24 before A24 was A24 but I think it's because, like, the stuff he's referencing, it's not, like, a direct reference that he's making to, like, okay, this is, like, Halloween, we're gonna do it yeah. like this. It's more of, like, in the spirit of, and yeah. he's doing it, like, he's not making a copy of it, but he's doing his own thing in that yeah. box. Yeah. I mean, he and he's, he's taking all the things that make horror so great and just distilling them mm -hmm. and putting them in his movie without playing on tropes too much yeah, yeah like our our final girl isn't the the innocent virgin from the 80s no she's just a fucking chick yeah you know everyone's just a fucking dude yeah. or just a, mm -hmm. it's like it's 
it's at once the victims feel a lot more real while the killers are exaggerated. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, like there's no of... one there's no one I would have expected like oh okay, he's going to die first cuz they always die first in movies. Right. Like, everyone is like even playing field. Everyone dies. Everyone dies. Yeah. Everyone which is dies. which I appreciated. Yeah. Cuz like that's there's no catharsis at the end. Like there's no like oh we beat him. No. Like, they got him no matter what. Well, she gets she gets picked up by by Captain um, Spalding. Yeah. Spalding at yeah. the end, you know. That moment too when it's them driving the car and the in yeah. into slow mo and the dun dun yeah, yeah. Yeah. dude, I was waiting for that moment the entire movie, dude. I was like, yes, give me the dun dun. I love that part, dude. Yeah, like and 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 what we were saying about like um, a couple of podcasts ago, we were talking about campy. What makes something campy? Yeah, mm-hmm. this is like. Musicals, dude. This is the best campy, yeah. mm-hmm. penultimate camp horror yeah, movie. It's yeah. camp as hell, yeah. It's camp as hell, culty as hell. Mm-hmm. Like the, the apex yeah. of it, you know? Camp done right, too. Super done right. And the villains win at the end, which is not common. Yeah, I, did you? Do we know did, he didn't have a trilogy planned, right? Because they no. came out like years and years later. That's yeah. the thing, the way that... No, ended, like the, the second one came out two years after? Was it, it was, two years? It was, it was 2005. Be, uh, it it wasn't supposed one. to be a... Thing. No, because like, yeah, no. the way it ended, like I could have just left it at that. Like it did not need a two following movies. Yeah. But, like it, I, don't know, I, guess. I think I think people wanted to know the lore. That's you know? exactly what I'm upset about this movie because I wanted to know what the heck was going yeah. on. Because the sequels don't really dive into the lore. The That's third the one does, but we'll get there when we get there. We're gonna do the whole trilogy. Yeah. But today, let's let's stick to to the house. Yeah. <clears throat> um. So, what about you? Hold, held up? Did you, did you like it more or less the second time? You got a year apart. Same. Same? Yeah, Same, cool. yeah. yeah. Why, why did you want to do this movie? I don't know. I think... Cause He's we, the one who recommended it, by the way. When we found out it was a trilogy, we needed something to watch on Shudder, and they had three movies that would cover three weeks of movies. Yeah, they had the whole trilogy. No, I'm saying, why did you want to review it with us? Because I saw it, and it was cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was just a cool well, movie. That was good enough reason for me. Yeah, huh? It was a cool <laughs> movie. It was a great choice. It's and pretty much why we picked it. Yeah. 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 Great choice. Yeah. Yeah. Great I mean, we've, we've been wanting to get back on some campy horror shit, mm-hmm. you know, for a while. That's the thing, too, because I, I we've been doing it, We've been doing too many good movies. I can't think you know? of another horror movie that we cover here. Like, this is, this seems up your guys' alley. Oh, look at the merch. What, oh, the what is that? What? What is, is that? that? The merch? Grand Reveal? Is that new merch? That's old merch. It's old merch. It's old merch. Merch it up. I have a merch, too. Merch it up. But this movie's hilarious too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so fucking is... funny. I mean, the the opening scene. Also, I think that's what this movie gets really good. Mm-hmm. Is the dialogue and the way it's acted. Mm-hmm. It's oh, not yeah. super overacted. It's not underacted. It's just right. Well, Chris Chris Hart Chris Hardwick. Yeah. He's who I meant when I said the host of the VGAs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you guys got that reference. I assumed that you. That's what you're talking about. <laughs> I find him a little over the top. The guy with the long hair? Yeah, yeah. but he's only he only talks for like He's also ten. comic he's relief. He's the comic relief. Yeah, yeah so it's like fuck yeah, it, whatever. I thought I thought I thought Captain Spaulding was the comic relief. He's fucking awesome. He's hilarious. Bro. He's awesome. Bro. And there's all these little tiny jokes, like I remember bro, I was watching a movie and uh like in the in the beginning when they're driving through the highway and they see like some billboard that says, If you lived here you'd be home already and I'm like, What the yeah. fuck, bro? <laughs> so fucking stupid. Yeah, it's fucking I think uh a lot of my notes, and what I keyed in on this time reviewing it, was how American this movie is. It's okay. very, yeah. very uh, middle America kind of. Uh... Yeah, like it's it's such a product of like what I imagine Rob Zombie's opinion Agreed. of what American culture is. Mm-hmm. American culture is. Road trips, roadside attractions, serial killers, fucked up fucking hillbillies. And especially that part of America that's like not the city. Yeah. You know, yeah. which is most of it. Like the car they drive, the fried chicken, yeah. the gas station, the fucking, mm-hmm. the fact that. The cops. The the cops, the, the, the fact that the group of people who were kidnapped before them are cheerleaders. Yeah. Like, like everything about this movie is so American. It's like a broadening of the Texas Chainsaw book. But... Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the yeah. Texas. You yeah, know, this could be anywhere in America. It's going on. Because I kept thinking yeah. it was like a, like a defense of like the pastoral almost. Because especially that last scene when Denise is leaving the, the graveyard and she passes the tractor and livestock crossing. Yeah, it's like she's leaving. Like, and they're always saying like, Captain Spaulding was giving Dwight Schrute shit 
for coming for coming through and documenting all of middle America. Yeah. Like you think like he's like you think what we're doing here is so like novel like why like what why do you want yeah, to like what are we a fucking yeah. zoo to you? Like yeah, like you just think you just document us. But what Rob Zombie is saying, I think is yeah, dude, all of America's a fucking zoo. Yeah. We are a zoo. It's, it's all what, like that. That's it's what all we like that, yeah. Built. Yeah. It's all like that. There's this YouTube channel I watch called uh, Soft White Underbelly. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. And it's this guy who who he's a photographer and he interviews like these fucked up people all the time. Yeah. Reminded me so much of that. I mean, th- this is thematically to me pretty much the exact same as Harmony Corinne. Okay. Like to me, that's what Harmony Corinne does too. Is he okay, takes yeah. American culture yeah. and he perverts it and distills it and shows it for what it really is. Yeah, and the weird the weird parts of exactly, it. Exactly. You know? yeah. yeah. But in an authentic way where he's not criticizing it, he's saying like fuck yes, like this is America. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like yeah. America isn't the fucking all that other plastic yeah. garbage that you see. And like, I feel this like, is America. I yeah. feel like Rob Zombie really like with this movie especially really pushed that style. Yeah. Of of like the literal visual style of this movie is very like hillbilly America horror kind of yeah. shit where it's clowns and all this colorful shit. Yeah. Like Route sixty six kind of thing like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and I feel like a lot of a lot of movies did that since then, you know, where it's just kind of clowny. But like, this is something that he loves, you know. It's not like there's nothing phony about it. Like, that's, Rob, that's Rob Zombie yeah, written yeah. all over it. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. not like trying to go. Oh, we should put a little cutscene in between here of a fucking guy talking about Sasquatch. Yeah, he's yeah. Going, it's gonna be sick if you put Sasquatch in there. Yeah, you know? yeah, like, yeah. It's a part yeah. of it. You know? it's t- tastefully done. That's it, because yeah. to him, that that's what makes. Mm-hmm. It's, there's nothing that's phony. It. There. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's super authentic. I fucking hate America, but I love. This vision of him to me, this I agree with Rob Zombie that this is to me that is what America is. Most of it, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like when I think of America, I don't think of fucking New York, City. New York, or L.A. or Apple or fucking. I think of the Appalachian Mountains and hillbillies murdering people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like Wrong Turn, the entire series Wrong Turn owes everything to this movie. Okay. Yeah, sure. Have you seen Wrong Turn? No. Wrong Turn is like. It's exactly this. It's oh, the people on a road trip. They take yeah, the wrong okay. turn. They end up in hillbilly zone, and they get. That's, well, up. there's a lot of horror movies that are like that. Yeah, and they're all ba- like because of this. Yeah, you know? exactly. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not like suburbs anymore. You know, like Halloween or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Now it's like to get wrong turn into hillbilly land, baby. Yeah. You know, but Chainsaw Massacre too, right? Like just people <laughs> who are where they shouldn't be. Yeah, well, Chainsaw Massacre too is almost like Doctor Satan's lab. Yeah. But you mean yeah, Doctor? Yeah. You mean I think he meant Chainsaw Texas Chainsaw Massacre also. Oh, okay. yeah, it's like, yeah, for yeah. sure. But Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, yes, I mean, yes, is yeah. like Dr. Sandy's yeah. fucking When did, there. I mean, Texas Chainsaw Massacre was like, what, 84? Something like that. When was the second one? Uh, that was also only a few years later, right? No, I like, think that was in the 90s. Oh, like a decade later? it was quite a bit later, oh, okay. yeah. Okay. But definitely before this. But even the remake, yeah. straight up, they're trying to gentrify some small town in Texas. That was an okay movie. I was impressed. I was expecting less. But I, I think... But it's the same spirit of... You yes. shouldn't be here. Yes. 74 to 86. Oh, okay. So, okay, yeah. So I was a decade off. Um, yeah, I think I think Rob Zombie owes a lot of this movie to Texas Chainsaw. Oh, yeah. Sure. He said it in an interview. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think everything since House of a Thousand Corpses, mm-hmm. House of a Thousand Corpses has become the Texas Chainsaw of that generation I can see for that. filmmakers. Yeah. Well, like, there's like, a, there's like a, this type of movie before and after this movie, Yeah, you know? exactly, yeah. Like, what, like the, I always make this comparison to other shit, you know? Like, there's a, there's a world of rock before Nirvana and after Nirvana. Right. Mm-hmm. There's metal before and after Slayer. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, it's, there's some other fucking comparisons, yeah. you know? Yeah, There's, I mean, every fucking... Or TV show or something like that's the intro fucking credits you know she flashes yeah. that weird little guy's name yeah, yeah. yeah that's every fucking I love I fucking love the intro credits they're awesome dude. you that's complain awesome. that they were too long I hate it when they do that dude no, I, I fucking shit. love, love it. that shit yeah. I love we it. love credits on the model yeah, yeah we do we watch them all yeah, we, yeah. we watch them all we yeah. fuck with credits I gotta see the key grip now <laughs> <It's> <laughs> crazy. Know, the ending it's like the end dude, question mark yeah I fucking was like best boy dude like that's so weird that was, cor- that, was, that was corny as hell, I think. I believe that's the guy that was tape. Okay. It, it, it would have been corny if it was just the end with the question mark, but then the question mark slowly came in. I kind of like that. I thought it was funny. Yeah. But I mean, that's the bit, too. It's yeah. a bit. Yeah, yeah it's, it's totally a bit. part of the bit. Yeah. So it's totally a bit. It's totally a bit. Mm. A lot yeah. of funny bits to it. It, it plays into the Dr. Satan myth. Right. Yeah. Of, you know, you think it's over and it's not. Yeah. Also, fucking uh, Captain uh, Spaulding. Mm-hmm. Best clown in horror. So sick, dude. I know, dude. 
Art. I prefer him over Art. Art the Clown, dude. I haven't seen uh, Terrifier. You haven't seen Terrifier? Fuck, that's a good movie, dude. No, I it's good. Either no. I prefer I prefer Captain Spaulding over. Art. I think Art is my favorite horror clown. For sure, that, dude. Well, Captain Spaulding has personality. He's funny. Yeah, so does Art. So does Art. Mm-hmm. Art's got personality. Dude. Art's got personality. And he's also fucking funny. He's... He just doesn't talk. But but he's so like it's it, it, dude it's it's fucking Charlie Chaplin with clown makeup as a serial killer dude. It's <laughs> okay, so nice. fucking good. It's, it's fucking it's good. It's so yeah, good. Yeah. Like he'll be killing someone and he'll like look at the camera and be like, <laughs> 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 and then he'll go and actually stab the person. Dude, it's I don't know. I, yeah, but I dude, Art the clown perfected the horror clown. Captain Spaulding being interviewed by the cops and when they ask him to think hard. And that zoom in just... <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude, that was Kill fucking me. funny. Yeah. Was or when like, he lifts his hands up and he's like this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so fucking funny. Or when it's like the guy... Well, also, I love that opening scene. Yeah. Amazing opening scene. Yep. The guy, the what, the robber with the ski mask talking. The worst ski mask too. Like <laughs> The worst ski mask ever. <laughs> but it's like the way he did the dialogue was so fucking good. He's like... Uh, Give me all the cash register or I'll fucking take all the teeth out of your mouth. And it was like... <laughs> The way he said it was so yeah, good. Like, it was so, like, well, dude, like, acted, I find. One of my favorite lines is the old dude coming out of the bathroom. Like, hey, don't I know you? You work at the hardware <laughs> store. <laughs> you shut the fuck up. <laughs> and then he, like, Even that him. guy's mask is like, it's end here, dude. <laughs> yeah. that's don't you work at the hardware store? Dude, that's so Jimmy, right? Or whatever the fuck his yeah, name exactly. is? What, they call him Little Willie or something Little like that. Little Willie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so fucking funny. Hilarious. You guys think of the music in it. Amazing. Yeah, it's so what are the highlights, bro? Yeah. It's all ham, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pussy liquor is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, dude. Rocks, dude. But liquor like, even... spelled like liquor. Liquor. Yeah. Like, liquor. That's yeah. fucking nice, dude. Even, even like the, the low-key like background music was fucking good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. in the opening scene where it's like that, just like, don't, 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 don't. Like, like a Payday 2 kind of thing. Yeah. Love it, bro. Love it. Mm-hmm. I mean, before before this, Rob Zombie, he made his, all his own music videos, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So Those were all the fucking white zombie movies, like yeah, white yeah, zombie videos they had. Yeah, and I think that's kind of how we got the funding for this. And I think, if I remember correctly, I've forgotten to look it up again, but I think the story is that like, whatever studio was like, we love your fucking music videos. We're gonna give you fucking make a horror movie, you know, on the cheap and do it. And they saw like his dailies, and they're like, we're not gonna give you any more money. Like, <laughs> this is no good. Well, I think he did this with Universal, right? right? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Like oh, yeah. they, mm-hmm. at first, like I was watching Joe Rogan interview before, um, before we were doing the pod. Mm-hmm. Joe Rogan, hey, Rob Zombie was on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. They talk about House of a Thousand Corpses, and um, he's talking about how like Universal wants to be all goody two shoes with like their movies. They were trying to do like kids movies and shit, mm-hmm. so they didn't want to do this movie for at first. But then, he, then it kind of happened, you know. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Universal used to be the fucking horror studio. Yeah, I mean, the, the, they have their whole Dracula, Frankenstein. Yeah. They have the whole unit, the um, yeah. Invisible Man. Uh, Black, Wolf Man, Black Lagoon. Shit. Yeah, that's all, all that. Yeah, yeah the, ca- the Cappy Horror Movies Universal. Yeah. You know? yeah. Do we all know the, the budget one? for this one? Did they mention it? Bro, it's oh, like man, $5 on yeah. the donut. Like, that's, that's what I'm saying, dude. <laughs> it's probably on IMDb. We could look it up. Yeah, it's yeah, funny, though, when you think one. about something like that and you go, like, this budget was probably fuck all. And you look at some crazy fucking budget movie and you're like, this is like diarrhea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, the jump is nuts. Like, a, yeah. I guess. Seven mil. Holy shit. Seven, back then, that's a lot of fucking that cash. That's more dude. than I thought. Early yeah, 2000s. but, uh, bro, all that, all those practical effects. Practical effects in this movie? Yeah. Ah. Set pieces, too. Or set set yeah. pieces, bro? Yeah, the pussy liquor set the opening scene when it's, like, fucking all red with the sign. Yeah. 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 I think one, one of my favorite things about this movie, too, is this is kind of off uh, off topic with the budget there, is, like, I love the way they did transitions in this movie mm-hmm. from scene to scene. You probably caught this, too, watching it, because you're, like, the, the, yeah. the technical film guy. Yeah. <laughs> They have like these, these, they'll do a transition where like they'll zoom in onto his plaid jacket and it transitions to the next scene. Yeah. And I, was, I was like, oh, it's fucking good, you know? I mean, all the stuff works in here. Too. Like, those are digital zooms, too. Like, yeah, digital zooms, yeah. It's all digital. But like, normally you do that and you're like, oh, that looks like shit, you know? It's yeah. all cheesy. It was tastefully done. It was done so good. It's done so yeah. fucking perfect. And it's like, it's part of the fucking uh, charm. I don't know what the word is. Like, pastiche or whatever the fuck you <laughs> yeah. know. Like, pastiche, yeah. You know, it's part of it. You go, yeah. fuck, it's perfect for this. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I, 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 I know what pastiche means, but for the audience, why don't you explain it? I don't know. You like the thing. <laughs> something like that. Pastiche is like, like, like on brand kind of something thing? Something like that. Yeah. No, it's like it's like referencing like medium and style okay. yeah. from previous it's, artists. But you, you it's, like it. It's not yeah. like... You, no, it's like tastefully done. Yeah, you're you not know, making like, yeah. Isn't it? Or, it's similar. It's similar to camp, but whereas camp is thematic, pastiche is stylistic. Yeah, yeah, I think. That's how I've always felt it was. Yeah. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But it's genuine, though. Yes. It's not... 
made up. Yeah, yeah. This feels very genuine, this movie. Yeah, what would you guys think of the, uh, we were mentioning, like, the negative, when it, like, oh, when it like whole scenes the negative. and negative oh, and stuff fuck, like that. I don't that. care, I love it, too, and yeah. it cuts to red sometimes for no reason. Yeah. Oh, I will oh, say, it's when, fantastic, when, dude. uh, with Otis, yeah. when Otis is, is, when we first get introduced to the cheerleaders, with Otis, not when they're introduced as missing, but when we, when we see them in person, mm-hmm. and Otis is there and he's yelling at them, and they, he does that cut from like blue light to red light to blue mm-hmm. light to red light, yeah. kind of as Otis is like fucking with them. Yeah. Like he'll talk to them, and it'll be blue light, and then he'll like, he'll yell to himself, and it'll go red light and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Did not like that. Oh, no. I like that a lot. Well, I mean, I was like, do you think he was trying too hard with that? It's just kind of rough. Like, I think it, it was yeah. just a little too jarring. The first, yeah. the first, once the scene kept going, I, it, okay. I grew into it. Yeah. But the first time it happens, I think it happens too fast. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're like, okay, red scene. And then right away, blue. You and think, I was uh, like, okay, hold on. What the, what the fuck just happened? And then it happened a couple more times. I was like, okay, now I get it. Who, okay, who made yeah, John yeah. Wick? I don't know who directed John Wick. I don't know, but I feel like John, I feel like John Wick has something to look to that. Yeah? Yeah, in the first, so in the first John Wick, uh, in the club scenes, when he was fighting... Um, if he was on, if it was on John Wick, like, it, like in his, it, like, if the camera's on him, the club was like blue, like blue lights were going on the club. Okay. If it was on the enemies, the blue lights, the red, the blue lights were red. Mm-hmm. But that's for Kill Bill too. Kill Bill, yeah, but you know, House yeah. of, Rob Zombie, baby. <laughs> yeah, Rob Zombie first, baby. Rob Zombie first, man. <laughs> Quinta, I mean, Quentin Tarantino's in this movie, bro. In, he's in this movie? No, I said that the fucking, the guy who works at, uh, at Captain the, Spaulding's, the guy who pushes the cart, looks like. Yeah, he looks like a like a like, like, like a team. dumb retarded version of fucking. One of the com- one of the first exactly comments on YouTube like was like was like fuck. Of course, of course, Quentin Tarantino's in this fucking yeah, movie. It looks He's exactly like, like that it. guy's like twice the size. Yeah. Of Quentin it looks like he had like a peanut allergy and he just ate a bunch of peanuts. Like yeah. Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. <laughs> I love that guy too. When he's pushing the car, and he reaches so, it. <laughs> Yeah, and the girl like, grabs the a handful of hair and smell it, dude. So fucking funny. So fucking funny, bro. And I, I like, I, I like, I love that whole scene in, in the on the cart too. That's sick. yeah, yeah. Like, uh, and I love the dialogue too from fucking Captain Spaulding, where he's like, um, like they just, they just, he just, he could be a fucking voice actor. Like it was so fucking good. Uh, I mean, rest in peace, Sid Hag, you know there, yeah. but yeah. Well, I think that's what Rob Zombie's kind of good at making like these set kind of location scenes. Yeah. It's not like a dialogue. That's why I kind of find that opening scene a bit clunky with the robbers, but I find that more because it's like a straight movie almost. It's reaction shot back. To yes, back yes, to yes. This. So I don't know if he has his full fucking hands on drama like. But a scene where I feel like he more, had to pull people in. Maybe, you know? yeah. Well, when it's more like theater, though, and it's like a show, here's well, a stage, here's yeah. a... Yeah. That's top notch. He, yeah. he definitely has a sense for theater, because a lot mm-hmm. of the humor in this movie is humor that he brings from the editing mm-hmm. with dialogue. Like, it's very yes. theater-oriented yes. humor. Like, a lot of, like... Like, there's, there's one I remember when... Uh, when the chicks... Dad calls the cop, and he's like, "Hey, like my daughter was supposed to come in last night. You know, I haven't heard from her. Whatever, whatever." And the guy's like, "Oh, there, she. Oh, there was a huge storm. They're probably just stuck in the mud." And on the word "mud," it cuts to them all fucking tied up in the house. <laughs> yeah. like, that shit was, is so funny. And there's a few cuts like that where, like, on the punchline, Rob Zombie will cut mm-hmm. to. Yeah. yeah, like the metaphor. No, yeah, it's keeping, fucking funny. I was keeping my eye this watch through on like editing like this. Yeah, it's so good. Oh, in yeah. this fucking movie. It's yeah. very good. Like compared to any fucking what's your name shoemaker, or any editor, this is fucking good yeah. editing. Like yeah. properly yeah. good. Every cut has purpose. Beating yeah. fucking rhythmic. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's so good. very well paced movie. Oh, like fantastic. super well paced. You movie. really feel the pace. I liked one of those cutscenes where it was he would zoom in on the TV that they were watching and it would be a palm reader mm-hmm. about your past and future. And as soon as you said future, it would cut to the next scene, which would be the news thing reporting on the yeah, exactly. cheerleaders. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, shit like that. So yeah. it's like a really yeah. interesting way to foreshadow, but also like just a nice break from the movie and then go right back into it. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know exactly what's going on. Like, I like the kind of opening too when you have the guy who's like, presenting an old horror movie or something. He's like, oh, we've got a special feature for you tonight. And then yeah. you watch the special feature. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's all fun. There's a, one of my favorite dialogue jokes is when Otis comes down for dinner mm-hmm. and uh, Chris Hardwick's character, Jeff, asks about uh, Dr. Jerry, Satan. Dude. Jerry? Yeah. Is it Jeff? Is it Jerry? Jerry. Yeah. God yeah, damn it, Jerry. Jerry. Yeah, Jerry. Jerry asks about Dr. Satan and Otis goes and he says, 
I know all about what you want to know all about. Then he pauses. Now, I don't know. <laughs> is, I don't know. Otis oh, is a so great fucking, fucking character funny. too. Yeah. He was very well acted. Like it was like the fucked up hillbilly horror character, mm-hmm. serial killer. Yeah. But like with charisma. Yeah, like he had like so he's much charisma. Good. He was fucking hilarious. But his monologue to the cheerleaders, like it, he seemed like super woke and like he knew what was going on, but like also he was so removed from sanity, dude. Like yeah. Really cool character. I used to do such a good impression of him going run rabbit too. I oh used yeah, to have it perfect. Yeah. Really, <laughs> run run. Right. It was like something like that. I got to practice it, maybe, but I, ten years ago I could do it perfect. You know, that's actually one part of the movie that I didn't like that much was the not the, the right right, right right before the run rabbit. You know, the yeah. burning in the graveyard yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, I thought it was funny that the the, the big guy like the big fucking uh, tiny. Is that his name, Tiny? Yeah. Fucking, he's like drifting with the fucking police car in the fucking oh, the backyard. Brother, yeah, the brother. RJ. Yeah. RJ, yeah. RJ, yeah. Driver, yeah. But I, I, I didn't like the whole like burning ceremony. I thought it was kind of useless. So. It was, felt like that was the original ideas, almost as little music video parts. Right. right. Yeah. Have the story together, so it just gets crazy kind of. At yeah. The end. I like that though. That burning, that that specific shot where they're like in the cemetery and they're having a bonfire. I mean, I liked it, but also I feel like it was too off pace with what was going on. You know. Like, it felt like they were doing stuff before that. Mm-hmm. Then they all went to go get changed real quick, and then they came back outside, kind of it's thing. It's a split. It's a hard yeah. split. Hard it didn't split. stand yeah. out to me, though. Because yeah. to me, I mean, and you even asked this, because Halen, when we were watching Halen, asked, like, do they just do this every Halloween? That's the thing. It seemed Probably, on pace with yeah. their, and I was their like, ritual. Yeah, exactly. yeah. This is their yeah. Halloween. This is okay, this yeah, was their yeah, Halloween sure. plans. Yeah. These guys coming in, it's just mm-hmm. icing on the cake for them. But yeah. Yeah. this so ritual. So it's almost they, like those cheerleaders would have been in their place. Exactly. If they had not gone with Dr. That's kind of where I feel the switch goes from from Texas Chainsaw 1 to 2. Yes. Kind of. That's yes. the, the hard line. Texas Chainsaw 2 also, there's that whole underground the scene yeah, in, the, in the mines and whatever. That's yeah. the Dr. Satan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. Yeah. that's why I would have loved some lore on the family because I feel like they don't mention anything about where they come from. They don't mention like the dad. Like, is Dr. I mean, Satan the dad? I mean, here, here's what I like so much about it. Back to what you're saying about the middle, middle America thing. There's just no lore. Fuck it. It's just... There's just some fucking people yeah. in the States are but fucked up like that. Yeah. There's, Huge there's, there's like Vietnamese this is trench warfare going on and there's like Dr. Satan underground. Like there's obviously supernatural shit going on, but they don't mention it. Like that's, there's I mean, supernatural. I don't know about supernatural. There, well, hey, the, dude, guy the physician was like, enough. yeah, he was, yeah. that was not human, dude. Like something was going on down there that was like inexplicable. By it's like, still some magic, you know? Yeah. Maybe, maybe a little magical, magical but I feel like, like I wanted to figure out. Like, I feel like it's all some quake up. shit, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think the axe guy at the end is the dad. Oh yeah. I think so. The guy so who's Doctor Satan? Satan? Yeah. Doctor Satan's just the fucking just Doctor Satan. Satan. It's just yeah. it's just yeah. their 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 on site medic. Yeah, that's yeah. Doctor yeah. that's Doctor Satan. Yeah. But yeah. the guy with the axe, I think it's the dad because he has all the skin melted off. But they don't mention them like slimy stuff. Right, yeah, who started the fire. He started yeah. the fire. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. That I always sense. thought of it that way. They yeah. don't say it ever, but that's how yeah. I always... Yeah. I always thought Dr. Oh. Satan was the father. We thought it was Dr. Satan? Okay. Yeah. Either or. Because it's his land, isn't it? I think they're... Or that's just the tree they... Yeah. They probably saved him. They're the ones who that's, saved him from the yeah. tree. It's not his property. Yeah, you're and right. And they okay, probably that makes sense. send him the offerings yeah. every yeah. Halloween, presumably. Yeah. Mm. And I love the the dual like kind of glasses shots there. Yeah. Where it's her face and she's like... There was some awesome. fucking cool uh, split screen the shots split too. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I, I fucking shot. I literally, dude, I wrote down split doctor in my notes, and I looked at him. I was like, Nick's gonna bring this up. <laughs> <laughs> I have that written down too. Yeah, dude. I love the, the split dial. The split, <laughs> fucking done so well it's too. Pretty cool. Yeah. So well. It's pretty cool. But is that even, hard to edit? Is that hard to do? Or? It's a lens. It's, it's a straight up lens with yeah. just two focal points. Yeah. It's so you like, can zoom in on her face really close, and then have him in the background kind of thing. It's for double focusing. Yeah. Oh. So, so the foreground and background focus are both on, in yeah. focus. Yeah. Like my hand would be in focus, and Lee would be in focus. Yeah. Okay. But you'd see a hard line or like a fuzzy line. Yeah. Like, Straight in the middle. Yeah. Of it's literally like like they cut two lenses in half and put them yeah. next to each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the I'm talking even like straight split screen. Okay. Yeah. Like there's a there's yeah. a couple of them, and then eventually it's in the same get, scene as the as the Doctor so, Satan yeah. scene. Yeah. And you get uh, even earlier though you get a double of uh, like that, of Captain Spaulding. You get him oh, yeah. twice. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it goes really from like a split screen of Doctor Spaulding, Captain Spaulding. Does it do a four screen too? It was dark in this. Yeah. That's cool. I think it might. Yeah, I think you're. I think it does do a four, a four, yeah, a four thing too. Actually, half a lens. Oh shit. (coughs) Different thickness. Yeah. Or distance from card from uh, sensor. Yeah. Do Do you think that was him trying to implement some uh, music video techniques? I think ideas. uh, Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the whole thing is a music video. Yeah, Yeah. but but even just as a as an homage to 
to horror. Like, Split Dioker is such a horror Well, that shot thing. I just showed was Carrie, right? Yeah, there, exactly. So. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I mean the split screen. Oh, the split screen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, the yeah. double, the double, like, I, um... Yeah. I think yeah. that's camp, too. It's fire. Yeah, it's yeah, all in the fucking is. same bag. You want to pass me a can of water? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, if I steal another can of water, also, yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, yeah. I'll go to the depth and earn between the uh, few breaks. <laughs> yeah, I, this, I mean, it's crazy how good this movie is. Yeah. It makes no sense. It I shouldn't really be, it this. Shouldn't be yeah. this good. Also, oh, okay, my, my, it might not be my favorite shot. We'll get into that later. My favorite, like, my favorite point in this movie was the, um, the execution. Of the cops. Oh, oh dude, I wrote that down too. Holds, I wrote, yeah, just dude, that's so sick, dude. Dude, it. Oh man, it. So wait a. And especially on the edge of your seat because I don't know what's coming. Because he holds it for such a it's long time. It's and such dude, a great hold. And it's but it's so good too because it's it's all action. 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 It's pause. And then you're holding your fucking breath yeah. for like ten beats too dude, long. It's, and you're like, so oh, it's gonna happen. One thing I didn't like about it was that it was slow motion. Yeah. I feel like it would have been better if it was. Hold, hold, hold. Pop, quick. Yeah. But I said it was like this big slow motion mm. thing, you know. And I wanted there to be gore. I wanted his brain to get splattered on the floor, but there was no gore in that scene either. Yeah. But why I liked that scene so much was that big Metal Gear Solid fan. You know what that is? The Metal game, Gear yeah. Solid. Yeah, the game. At the end of the third game, you, you, you fight your mentor. It's like the last boss of the game. And at the end of the game, uh, you're a, like, it's just a cut. Like, it's, it's the same kind of shot. Overview, and your your character is pointed a gun at your mentor who's who's like dying on the floor, and the game won't continue and end until you press the shoot button. Holy shit. So you just chill. Yeah, you could be here for twenty minutes, and you just have to. Like, it's like and that's oh, yeah. It's a yeah. Cool. And and like when I saw the scene, I was like, "Fuck, they're pulling a Hideo Kojima <laughs> on me, dude." Which is crazy too, because although it's a Japanese game, I feel like Metal Gear Solid is also very American. It is. I mean, the, the characters are American. Yeah. It's all about movies. Yeah. The whole themes of these games are all inspired by movies. You know, Hideo yeah. Kojima is just a big fucking movie buff. For sure, Rob Zombie likes video games, too. I can see that. Yeah. I, I guarantee you, he's Hideo played. Kojima loves House of a Thousand Corpses. Yeah. It's, one of, it's probably one of his favorite movies, for sure. I guarantee it. On, on that point of that execution shot, I mean, like, Rob Zombie gets a lot of... Not flack, but I feel like people don't take him seriously. No. Now, yeah. no. Yeah. But... They should. Probably genuinely, then, though. genuinely, what an artist. Every shot in this movie is so well composed, I think, so framed. It's, it's the most thought of. And he, oh, takes, he takes risks, too. Yeah. yeah. And they work out amazing. Julia, Julia uh, what do you think of House of the House Corpses? Guys, my bad. My cat is also annoying this week. She's in heat. It's not your bad, dude. Halen's been trying to get her attention on the entire podcast. <laughs> Halen has been wanting to meet my cat for, like, years. Okay? <laughs> I've been doing the... Pss, pss, pss. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, I mean, Jeff- I think I think the reason why, sorry, to cut you off. The reason why was is because the subject matter is so goofy and so yeah. horror that it kind of for for people that aren't into movies like that, right? Or people that are pretentious with their movies, like film studies kids, they 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 don't really look at why this movie's good. They just care about oh, it's a goofy horror movie with yeah. this funny yeah. shit, you know? Because I think in in terms of. Um, like authorship mm-hmm. and having an artistic stamp on your style. work, style, style, yeah, and everything. Like s- speaking to that pretentious, but staying in horror. Like the first thing that would come to my mind is Ari Aster with Midsummer and Hereditary. Like that was afraid for also. a lot of people. That's like peak horror. horror. Yeah, I find this has way more style. It's way more artistic. Mm-hmm. It's, it's way. It's it's just like it's more stylized for sure. Yeah, for sure, way more stylized. But like. Like you watch this and you're like, this is Rob Zombie. Mm-hmm. You know, you watch oh, yeah, yeah. you watch Hereditary and it's like, it's it's Ari Aster. Like Robert Eggers Hereditary. could have directed Hereditary. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think like, maybe not Bo's Afraid. Yeah, but Hereditary for sure. Yeah. But in terms of horror auteurs, mm-hmm. like this movie puts Rob Zombie in the top fucking three. Dude, Otis coming down the stairs in Denise's dad's skin and yeah. then kissing her, dude. <laughs> yeah. never seen that before so that was sick, yeah. Yeah. he like opens yeah. the mouth skin dude like they're oh. all chanting daddy daddy yeah, dude. Oh, also so also cool. um, Rob Zombie's wife is in this movie no. oh he's in she's in all of this movie. Yeah, every <laughs> single one fuck yeah I know but she she's the what's her face she's the um, she's Firefly she's baby she's baby, baby Firefly, Firefly yeah. yeah 
The, the fucking, the first time we see her in the house where she has, like, her pants all the way down. Yeah. yeah. Looks at the fucking sticks him in the camera and then, like, pulls her pants up a little bit. I was like, bro, that's such a Rob that's Zombie wife, move. Bro, dude. Like, <laughs> dude, it'd be so Rob Zombie to just do that with your wife yeah. all the time, you know? Half of every Rob Zombie movie is just Sherry Moon Zombie half naked on the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, ha- you haven't seen the Halloween remakes, no, but in the Halloween it. remakes... Is she in it? So what, pe- what a lot of people didn't like about the Halloween remakes is that Rob Zombie demystified Michael Myers. Because in the originals, Michael Myers is like, he's almost like a mythical creature. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no more. Human. No there's more. zero yeah. more. Rob Zombie gives us his backstory from when he was a child and everything. Yeah. And oh, in... so maybe I have seen it then, because I know him as a child. We and, like, the connect- mask and he beats the kids. And his forest. connection with... Uh... Wait, no, in the original ones, it's like that too? But it's just but like it's one sister. scene. Yeah, yeah it's true. Where he's yeah. just like killing like Rob rats Zombie, in this Rob fucking backyard. Yeah. The family drama and everything behind mm-hmm. it. Yeah, okay. which I I kind of like. You know, it's done well. I fucking like. love it. I love lore. But it's kind of implied in the first in the original though. Yeah, but like we get that. But Rob Zombie does dive deeper yeah. into the actual lore. But yeah. um, my point was just that Sherry Moon Zombie is Michael Myers' mom, and she's a stripper. And there's like a 20 minute scene of just her on stage just fucking stripping. <laughs> Babe, that... it's integral to the movie. <laughs> yeah. That's one that's one way to be proud of your wife, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, I'm pretty sure he said that in interviews too. Where people have asked me, he's like, he's like, dude, my wife is so hot, why wouldn't I want her on camera? <laughs> yeah, probably. Like, my, that's... Boy, boy, <laughs> my, <laughs> dude, my wife is hot. <laughs> that's literally his answer. Yeah, this movie rocks, dude. This it's fucking good. rocks. Yeah. Apex of cult uh, and Cappy. Yeah. The only other note I had that we didn't talk about already was that the kind of last girl, I didn't, my final connection with her. But you're not supposed to. Yeah. That I, yeah, yeah, it's not intentional to them, build like, a character them feel, connection yeah. with him. Yeah. It's supposed to be some random yeah. puta, bro. That's I like, lose she, track she, of who's dating who because there's no yeah. chemistry between any of them. The yeah. only reason why, because I know Baby flirts with Dwight Schrute, and then one of them gets pissed. I'm like, hey, for sure she's a girlfriend. Yeah. But other what? than that, dude, they're like punching way above their fucking weight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like there's no like there's two dorks, the two hot dudes. chicks. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. The two chicks look like they're, 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 they're just two run of the mill brunettes. They look yeah. the same to me. I can't tell the difference between the two. I, I mean, I like the uh, what was the other one? Not Dwight Schrute's girlfriend. The other one that's like so the, the one who Denise. The final yeah, girl? She's the final girl. Yeah. No, no. Okay, no. The not the final girl. So Dwight Schrute's Denise girlfriend. Yeah. Fucking love her. Yeah, yeah, I think she's hot as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like I was like, I was like, that, that's a, that's that kind of bitty right there, bro. <laughs> that's that kind of girl right there. Bro, she got spice, olive skin, yeah. and she's a, she has a bitch face, bitch, but, resting bitch face, bro. That's my kind of bitch, bro. Her or the girl, the Latino from fucking uh, baked with Hansel and Gretel. Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, he's gotta take a right walk, now. dude. Dante's gotta take a walk on this one. <laughs> I gotta go the Latina chick from half of the from yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm go. sorry. I'm Talk sorry. about spicy. Oh fuck, man. That was oof. Um, to what's best girl, best horror girl of all time, right there. <laughs> to what you said about uh, Dwight Schrute's girlfriend yelling at baby. One of my notes is that they they have no respect for hospitality. Yeah. No, really. Like they're like get out of there. But bro, they're murdering the motherfuckers. Why do they have any hospitality? No, no, yeah. but way before that, like before, like they're, they're a little so, quirky. They're, they're on the offense of the entire time. Yeah, like they pick baby up. She's just hitchhiking. They don't know she's gonna be murdered yeah. yet. And True. already the two girls are being fucking bitches to this poor woman who was just trying to hitchhike home. True. True. Yes. She invites them into their home, and like, yeah, the family's fucking weird, but like. They're fixing your car for free and giving you shelter in a yeah. storm. Like, Towing you, doing all this shit, going yeah. to the scrap and getting your shit. To me, like, their attitude was way... Bro, they got that They got that bitch sense, bro. Yeah. Yeah. They what? got that, that, that vagina yeah. sixth sense, you Is know? Is that Rob Zombie saying that's a typical American? Short and curt and rude? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, mean, I think so. That's probably probably typical. Fun. Like, they don't respect how they That's the only Yeah. If, it, if, it, if this movie was made in Canada, dude, that, Towards, that whole thing would exactly... Oh, thank it, you so much. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Or it'd be like, be like, Sorry. so what do you do? Yeah. Oh, I do this. Oh, okay. I kill people. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah that's nice. <laughs> How many have you killed? Oh, you enjoy doing that? Yeah. You probably think of doing that for a long time. Do you mind if I take notes for my book? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that shot when Denise's dad got killed. It reminded me of Tropic Thunder where they're making fun of like war deaths, like Dunkirk. It just gets shot in the back. Yeah, and yeah. He yeah. falls into the puddle, dude, like face first. Like, that was a sick. That was really cool. It was a platoon. It's pastiche, yeah, that's, bro. That's what it looks like, yeah. Pastiche from this movie. Yeah. yeah. I, I also love the the second cop. Not the, the not skinny the, little guy. Yeah, the skinny little guy. He was fucking kind of annoying. Those two guys 
I've never played anything other than cops. So. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 Cops, never cops. But uh, that second one, when he's like, he's on the walkie-talkie and he's talking, and then they hear gunshots. Yeah. Like they know he knows his partner's been murdered, yeah. and then Otis comes out with a gun. And the cop puts his hands up, drops his gun, and surrenders. Like, dude, you already know he killed your partner. You should just try ready. harder. You should be ready. He's, uh, he's not into it. Dude, dude. He's scared. Officer scared. down, shots fired, dude. That's mm-hmm. when you're supposed to shoot. Yeah, but the guy, Otis, isn't black, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, it's American. Yeah, you gotta American. give him the benefit American. of the doubt, yeah, bro. Like, he's, a, he's a middle-class American in the fucking boonies. Yeah, you're right. fucking yeah. Since he's a kid. My American bad. flag t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, a patriot. Bad. Yeah. That too. There's a lot of American flags, mm-hmm. but they're always, they're always, not all the all the American propaganda, villainized. Is, villainized. It's always in shots that are morbid and macabre and and yeah. fucking fucked up. So like that. I mm-hmm. like. I feel like this this theme of America is fucked up is like all over this movie. Do you think? Do you think it could be a theme of people being fucked up, like having that macabre kind of like interest? You know. I think it is specifically American. Though. Yeah, there is like an it's it can only happen in America. Yeah, I, I think, think so too. Because like technically, thing. all this is happening on a American cross country trip. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. like this is like yeah. a. And that's the first fucking stop, bro. That's exactly. <laughs> it. Yeah, and I think it's <laughs> a bad trip. Yeah. The first fucking stop, bro. <laughs> and I think also like, imagine all the other fucking stops on the way. Was there fucking yeah. twenty minutes late? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of uh, in terms of current pop culture, like I don't know how big true crime was back then. Mm-hmm. But I feel like this movie predicted, like like these two guys making their book about roadside attractions mm-hmm. and investigating serial killers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. There's like fucking seventeen hundred podcasts about that shit these days. Yeah, yeah. like like this this movie. Not ours though. This this fucking movie idiot. like <laughs> predicted the zeitgeist of the 2020s. Sure, yeah, I, I can I can America. see that. I can see that. Yeah. Might With like though. criminal minds and mind hunter and serial killers being all the rage, especially bro, all, all and... these fucked up things in America, yeah, happen in places like this. Yeah, you know they don't happen. I mean, they happen in Chicago or whatever the fuck, but like that's like some gang shit usually. Yeah, you know it's not like some weird twisted back country kind of like hillbilly deliverance yeah. kind of shit. You know, a deliverance exactly. Yeah, yeah. But what, what's what's that author? I don't know. Let's move on. Deliverance. <laughs> No, I'm I'm thinking of the guy um, with the movie with Robert Pattinson and fucking sp- the new Spider-Man, Tom Holland, mm-hmm. uh, the Devil All the Time. No idea. It's a Netflix original, very good movie. It's it's also it, similar uh, content, but a lot more dramatic, less horror. Okay. But it's it, it's based on a novel by a guy, Knock Him Stiff. His okay. his his most his his biggest his most famous work is Knock Him Stiff. And all of his stories happen in this city called Knockham Stiff. It's a city in mid- middle America. And it's all about the depravity, deliverance, all these themes, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Stephen King, too. Yeah, but Stephen King's like Maine. Yeah. It's Maine. Because Stephen, King's, Stephen yeah. King is like, Stephen King is this, but in the suburbs. Because Stephen King's whole thing is that, True. Is that there's yes. horror everywhere. Yes. Only in Maine. Yeah, all, like, I think all of his stories, legit, are only in Maine. All, almost all of them, yeah. yeah. But there's quite a, there's a couple of them, like, because when I was a kid, I was a big Stephen King fan. Yeah. I love Stephen King. Yeah. And uh, there was one called, um, I don't know what it's called, but it's like this collection of short stories. Okay. And one of them takes place in this car, in this kind of like Route 66 kind of style oh, thing, okay. you know? Yeah. I mean, the Gunslinger series, obviously, isn't in Maine. That's a fantasy series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gunslinger is fine yeah. as fuck, too. But, um... I mean, yeah, but fucking Stephen King stole that from fucking H.P. Lovecraft. Everything happens in Arkham, Providence, New England. It's it's the same setting. It's yeah, just like a hundred years later. But every every horror person has something to own Lovecraft yeah, in a way, true, you know. Yeah. So especially yeah. writers. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh. Yeah. Would you guys? Would you guys not like about this movie? Me, the the bottom of it is like, like I like the opening scene, the dialogue. I've listened to a million times. I like know it by heart almost. Yeah. yeah. But. Uh, like the directing in that first scene, I don't like the directing in it. The the heist, the robbery. Yeah, really? you, you think you think it was too it. normal, yeah. too, it was basic? too normal, and it was almost like, okay, let's just go to a wide shot. I don't know what to go to. I'm just gonna go to a wide shot. But I think that's okay, a good way to super close up, ease you See into it? the yeah. to the rest of the style yeah. of the movie. It's, but compared to the rest, right? Yeah, I find that yeah. one stands out a bit. It's just yeah. too yeah. normal, almost. Yeah, I mean, maybe that might have been that might have been put in there exactly <laughs> for that reason, yeah. right? People yeah. like us 
toss us in the style right away. We don't care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But for your average horror fan, maybe mm-hmm. Rob Zombie mm-hmm. felt like you needed a that's little fair. intro. Yeah, no, that's intro fair. to what? Like, what did it tell? What did it tell you about the movie? Like, just the style. It's yeah. Kind of fucking just because the, the, the rest of the movie is so. Yeah. The rest of the movie is so. I feel like Captain Spaulding talking to Dwight Schrute in the first place could have told me all I needed to know about. No, we're talking yeah. about the heist scene. Yeah, but I'm just saying, supplement that with, yeah, his inner his interactions with the the crew. Mm-hmm. I could have got the same sentiment out of it. Yeah, but it also kind of gives you the cold tease too. So like, Fair. within three minutes, someone's getting killed. You're like, yes, in the theater. Sure. You know? It's a cold yeah. open. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But like, I, I did like that scene. Maybe not for the filming parts of it mm-hmm. though, it's like the way scene. it's yeah, filmed. Yeah, but yeah. like, I love the dialogue. Yeah, the I love the yeah. fuck your grandma. Fuck yeah. you. Yeah, points the chicken at him. It's all the whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, it's our hard intro to Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> as he kills the fucking true. Man. <laughs> it was funny you know yeah well acted I like mm-hmm. that shit you know I think it gave us a good taste of what the rest of the movie is gonna Captain be Captain Spaulding's oh. fucking sick dude no matter what he does he's yeah. fucking he's solid in the movie mm-hmm. for yeah. me it was just the angles in that first scene okay. everything else was yeah. but technically you didn't like it yeah the yeah. angles okay. that he picked I, I wouldn't have picked the same things oh, okay sure but right. everything else is like all above my pay grade you know yeah, that one I because talk about angles, the rest of the movie is flawless to me. It's insane. Like almost every second scene, I was jotting down as my potential favorite scene. Like, really? It's, I, I literally, dude, fucking shot wise, composition wise, transition wise, editing wise, I find this movie fucking perfect. But I think the the like other than like the shots where like the music video yeah. in like uh, inspired stuff. For me, those those transitions were so style. Like, yeah. like oh, yeah. I've never seen transitions like that in any other movie done well. They're sick. Yeah. Even like the good. zoom in, like I was saying, the zoom in on the plot and it just cut and it yeah, just like swirls and cuts. Super close on an eye. Yeah. Even just like to add to the America theme and stuff and, and the way Rob Zombie films certain subjects, mm-hmm. the attention he brings to the car that they're road tripping in mm-hmm. is like, it made me think of uh, fucking Jack Kerouac's on the road. Like it's literally like. Like, it's the, the, like, idyllic, like, America is the ability to drive across country. Like, yeah. Ameri- like, the essence of America is the road trip. A lot of people do it, too. Yeah. A lot and of And that, do. the attention he, he brings to the, the car, like the, you almost feel, if you're kind of keyed into the stuff, you almost feel just as bad for the car mm-hmm. for being murdered. As you True. I, I kind of did too. I was like, I was like, ah, oh, yeah. There's so much attention. Every time the car pulls up, he's filming the car. Mm-hmm. It's always the the car, the car, the car, the car, and then they're destroying the car. Yeah. That's yeah. the first victim. That's the first kill of the movie. And they're all these big boat American fucking seventies fucking exactly huge yeah. cars. You know, is it all? Yeah. Like yeah. when you think of an American road trip, that's the fucking car you think of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. True. Or, you know. Yeah. Big and station wagon. Yeah. Exactly. Like that. And there, Rob Zombie is destroying that and bring bringing mm-hmm. it all down and showing showing you what it really means. Yeah. Oh, it's a clean fucking metaphor. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think so. I think the, the he uses the car as, as a, a very powerful symbol for the first half of the film. Yeah, and you know what he was saying in the Joe Rogan interview too was like the the the, the way he makes his characters and stuff like that. Like growing up, he felt like he was always the odd one out, and he always like why he makes monster movies and stuff like that. He yeah. feels like. He relates more to the monster. Yeah, fuck, he in, gave himself the name Zombie. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> but, like, he... That was his parents. Oh, okay, it was my parents. But it could touch on the theme, too, is that, like, he talks genes. about how, like, uh, yeah. it's all, all these other monster movies, it's like, the monster's not doing anything wrong. Yeah. It's just it's just being a monster. It's, doing it's, yeah, just, yeah, it's, it's just, just being a creature, nature, you know? Yeah. yeah, that's what, yeah, Frankenstein, like, that's all, that, the whole... Yeah, but even, like, Godzilla, Godzilla's probably just fighting part of its normal, natural fucking life cycle is to go blow up Japan, you know? But, and I feel like that could be the same thing with... Hillbillies in the States. Mm-hmm. I don't know, dude. The hillbillies in this movie are pretty villainized. Yeah, yeah. No, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm just saying, like, it's normalized. Everyone's right, yeah. Shitty, though. Everyone's yeah. shitty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, have you, did you watch The Monsters? No. No, he, he made a movie just, like, what, two years ago? Yeah. The Monsters? Yeah. yeah. It's like, it. that's, like, basically, like, the universal horror cinematic mm-hmm. universe brought together. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, but in that style, as it would be, you know, have a flat background when it's a close up. Or yeah, something. Mon- like a- like Adam's Family style. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But also, by the way, I I watched this MTV Cribs too. He yeah. has an MTV Cribs. Yeah. Yeah, 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 really? Like, yeah, he has, has the original Adam Family taxidermy polar bear in his house. In no yeah. fucking way. Yeah, that's so funny. House. Yeah, it's fire. It's for hey, what didn't you like about the movie? No, Laura did. 
No, no lore. lore. You like I'm, a, lore. I'm a slut for lore. Yeah. I really would have liked. It was cool. It was cool. Like the actual attraction at the gas station where they kind of walk you through the mm. serial killers and they kind of tail end it with Dr. Satan. And then they have that Jerry character to like kind of poke like, hey, well, this is kind of interesting. Like, let me hear more about this. But I would have loved to know more about, because I feel like the only thing I know about the family is Tiny and how he got his, his burns. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it would have been nice to know a little bit more about like Otis or like where they came from, why they're living there. Correct me if I'm wrong though, but in the first Texas Chainsaw, we don't get any backstory either. Oh God, no. No, no. no zero. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 yeah. no. I mean, I kind of like the lack of lore. Mm-hmm. To me, the, the lack of lore plays into the fact that this could be anywhere. This mm-hmm. could be anyone. But it also makes you feel like he's just taking like the best bits about horror movies and placing it on a screen. And you don't need lore because these are characters that have been tried and true so many times before. Yeah. Like, yeah, this yeah, is, yeah. like yeah. you have your collaborators, you have the actual perpetrators. Like, yeah. This is what a horror yeah, movie Yes like and no, family. because the thing is, I feel like someone like Otis, I feel like he's a very unique villain. Like, I don't yeah. see horror villains, serial killers like that very often where they're, like, charismatic and funny. And even yeah. smart, too. Like, and smart, and they talk like that, but yeah. they're, like, hillbillies in the States, you know? Yeah. Well, I find him, like, the the fucking guy in the, the second Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I find him very, like, character-wise. Sure. I didn't watch that guy. the metal plate. In there. the second uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that guy's not smart. No, I, I, I don't find Otis particularly smart. Yeah, he's, he's, he's he might aware. not be smart, he just yeah. knows a lot, but what he, he was spewing wasn't necessarily, like... But he, he like. No, but you could tell in a different setting he would be very smart. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, yeah. He sounded yeah, like yeah, Donald yeah. Trump at like a, yeah. a debate. Dude. Like he didn't sound like. No, but he because he, he and it, not only in this movie but in other movies too. Whenever whenever zombie gives Otis a monologue, yeah. it's always it's like about a principled stance. It's always a principal stance, and it's always about his upbringing. Yeah. I'm a I'm a product of my environment. Mm-hmm. It's always very like Psych 101. Yeah. Okay. Like yeah. it's it's not just like. Oh, this is fun. Oh, I like mm-hmm. seeing people hurt. I'm a sadist. Yeah, it's very yeah. much like mm-hmm. I had a fucked up life, so I'm gonna do fucked up things. Like it's, and that's also like you shouldn't have come here. Like why would you come here? Yeah, like this yeah. is what I do here. So why would yeah. you? Yeah, but here? for me, what got it was the way he said it, like his syntax, the way he talks. He's, yeah, he's like yeah, exactly. Very, like it's very like he's like he could be a stand-up comedian sure, if you yeah. wanted to. Well, yeah. that's the thing too, because um, in terms of dialogue, baby and their mother and the the guy in the wheelchair. Like, they all talk like Hicks. Yeah. Otis has that accent. Yeah. But his his sentences are longer, his words are bigger. He, Syntax is different. He's, exactly, yeah. You can tell he stands out intellectually from the rest of the family. Bro, also, how mm-hmm. fucking funny is the grandma, dude? <laughs> She's just in the background wearing, like, this fucking samurai outfit half the fucking time? That's the grandpa. <laughs> the grandpa. Oh, that's the grandpa? <laughs> yeah, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was fucking funny. His, I thought it was hilarious. Dude, his, when he comes out for his, like, comedy routine, he has a hat. It's just funny. <laughs> <laughs> he got me, dude. For, for me, what is, when, when, they're, when they're doing the burial at the end of the movie, where they're, where they're, where they're dropping the two characters down the down yeah. the shaft, yeah. you see the, the grandpa just sitting like on yeah. the floor, like this wearing the fucking sam- yeah, the like, samurai, like, like this fucking Dragon Ball Z outfit. Yeah. The samurai costume fucking gets me. Too. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I think it's fucking hilarious. I love Otis's corpse paint. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty cool. Oh, big, very cool. Big yeah. fan yeah. of corpse yeah, paint. Cool. What didn't you like? What didn't I like? Yeah, I found. Uh, well, like I said, that that Otis's first monologue in front of the cheerleaders, those those cuts, I found a little uh, jarring. Okay. And I find the negative stuff got old. He did it too much. Uh, I agree. Yeah. Like maybe twice, mm-hmm. maybe three times to cut chapters, but like, there's like a bit in the middle where it's like mid scene. It's every just two cops, scenes. It's just the cops it's rolling like, up to the house, and it was negative. Like there was no, there was no like. Yeah. Yeah. Meaning yeah. to it. it was like simply just like a like mm-hmm. a setup shot. Yeah. Like there was no need for. There was one. There was one. There was one entire scene too that you brought up when they go to the porn store to buy booze. Yeah, useless. No, I like oh, that scene. Yeah, I do and like that. Scene. I like that yeah. scene. Yeah, it, it gives it gives some uh, some a little bit of world building as to what type of liquor porn store would be in that area. But <laughs> that's like a that's like a a deleted scenes type of thing. Like, yeah. I guess the movie wasn't that long, so they, they kept yeah. it in. But like, I feel. I feel like could have cut it. I feel like that could have been cut. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I, I, I didn't I, learn I, anything from it. I yeah, yeah, I like that scene too. I don't mind it. It's funny. I do like it. Yeah, but if it was cut, I'd like the movie just as much. Mm-hmm. Definitely sure. unnecessary. Yeah. I found. I heard uh, 
don't know if it was an interview or someone talking about film there, but they were saying that um, the moment in Fargo, you guys seen the movie Fargo? Yeah. The moment in it when, uh, I believe it's the, it's a female, female cop character in it or something. She goes on a date, with like a native guy yeah. at a restaurant. That's, That's the same diner, thing. Right? Yeah. yeah. That scene has nothing to do with the story. Yeah. It's nothing at all. The scene could be cut again. But just like the interaction between the characters and you get a little more connection with the characters like m- makes the fucking movie work together as a yeah. whole mm-hmm. yeah I, 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 I like the I like the depth scene a lot yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. that it's an aside it's not the main A yeah. B it's not even C it's just something adds character mm. yeah. yeah here I don't know if it added character or added anything but I love that scene well it kind of made it seem like what they were planning on doing was like more of a party than it was like a run of the mill or like an impromptu thing that was happening because they were buying alcohol for it like it was a it was a celebration that they were getting ready for yeah so I kind of... So they, they like to have a good time, you yeah. know? It's like, yeah. uh... Oh, where do, where do they get their like money? get fucked up and do... Get fucked up, too. It's old money. It's old <laughs> money. We, like to get, we like to get fucked up and do fucked up things. Yeah. I like to do hood shit with my hood too. friends, you know? Yeah. Yeah. the guys yeah. that the goobers do. <laughs> I don't know. What I, what, I, what I didn't like about the movie, I think, was also too much negative shit. Yeah. And that scene with the with the burning, I thought it was, I thought it was like, misplaced. I don't know. Mm-hmm. That I didn't mind. I really didn't... I find the actual one thing I didn't, I genuinely don't like about this movie is is when our final girl meets Doctor Satan and escapes from the underground. Mm-hmm. I don't like how it's like the guy with the axe is coming at her, mm-hmm. and she screams, and then she ducks, and he swings, yeah. and then he breaks the door down for her, and then she runs, and then she turns around, and she screams, and he swings, and she ducks. And he collapses. The, like it's the exact same scene twice. Yeah. Just yeah. once is at the doorway, once is at the tunnel. Yeah. It's like, are, is that a joke? Yeah. To me, that was like, okay, once mm-hmm. you know, like also literally that's, the exact shot for shot, just in a different spot. That's one thing too. We were building up Doctor Satan so much, and he was there for like what two minutes. Yeah, that I didn't mind because by then I forgot about. But Dr. he ended up killing Denise in the end. Because it was so cool. Yeah. It was so cool. Doc, the Doctor yeah. Satan with yeah. the. The what's his name Jerry on the thing? Yeah. I thought it was a fucking sick scene, sick costumes, like all this crazy sick shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's only like a minute and a half long, two yeah. minutes long. Yeah. I was like, bro, like I want to see more of this. You know, it's fucking also, fire. The scalp Jerry, the scalping doesn't hold up because the next scene comes, he just has like sh- stray hairs. Like it's not scalped. He just looks like he's just bald in a wrong. Yeah, and it looks <laughs> like they shaved his head. Yeah, long. yeah, like it was just bad, yeah. like bad scalping etiquette. Like it wouldn't, it didn't hold up. Yeah, that's just. I mean, you know. They only have, they can only do so much with it's only seven million bucks. Yeah. What do you think about Dwight Schrute as the fish? That right. was kind of cool. Dude. Yeah, that was. Yeah. That was yeah. I love, that was I love they do with his eyes too. It was like fish eyes in there. Fish dude. boy. That yeah. Yeah. That's not real. That's not real. Yeah. yeah, I love. Yeah, that's that's that that's sick. Yeah. I love. Well, they, got, running, they got big they ass fish, bro. Because too, dude. Like it was. Oh, was that's cool. Yeah. The 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 fish boys foreshadowed when they first walk into Captain Spaulding's museum, and Dwight Schrute standing there, and he looks back to. To Jerry, he said, "You see alligator boy over here?" Nice. And it's literally like the same pose, but it's half alligator. Oh. And then like an hour later, he's yeah. fish boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fire. I kind of like how they didn't. They never let on that Doctor Spaulding was in on it. That was a really cool Captain Captain, Captain Spaulding. Yeah. Yes. That was a really cool fucking name twist right. at the end, dude. It's <laughs> a respect on that. It's a respect, yeah, it's respect on that. Yeah. 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 R.I.P. It's, it's true. true. I actually googled how he died today. Mm-hmm. He choked on his vomit mm-hmm. and died. Oh, the actor? Yeah, drunk yeah, or yeah. something? Sid Hayek yeah. or something. Not even, dude. Oh, yeah? He Not just even. puked and He died. fucking did that role so good. Yeah, dude. Oh, Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Killed it. He killed that movie. I feel like all three of them, dude. He was fucking. Yeah, he carries the other two. He was a fucking movie. sick. Yeah, we'll talk for about sure, it when we sure. do. Yeah. But... Yeah. Uh, fuck, what else do you guys have to say about it? Do you want to move on to uh, a different um, segment? I mean, uh. Fuck, I, I just like the movie too much. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I got nothing bad to say. You want to take a, take a quick break? I'll check my notes. I got to oh, go to the sure. bathroom, yeah, yeah, and then sure, we'll, yeah. we'll come back for the for the last half. Guys, we're gonna we're gonna take a break right now. So, um, listen to this ASMR with the pizza. We took a little break. You guys won't notice because we're gonna edit it out. It'd be funny if we just had thirty minutes of that. Would be funny. I'm gonna dead air. It'd be live. We're doing the show live. Next notice week. how the pizza's eaten. <laughs> pizza's gone. Mm. We had to make a supply run for more water. But we're back now. Um, someone talk. I'll check my notes. Yes, I think uh, we might have run out of analysis on the movie now. So I think we're going to move on to our 
We all fucking like the movie, right? The movie's good. We like the fucking yeah. movie a lot. We're gonna move on to the more planned segments it's of this show. The show. quintessential this monolith show. film podcast club movie. I think it, it fits all the boxes, I think. Yeah, yeah. Of what we're... We all fucking like it. Yep. Oh, one of the... One of the... One of the... The cut jokes I forgot to mention was... Uh, they're talking about Otis. Mm-hmm. Baby's talking about her brother. Yeah. And she says, Oh, my brother's upstairs doing something dumb. And then it cuts to him torturing the cheerleaders. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then cuts back. That was funny. How do they not hear the yelling? Though? Yeah. <laughs> That's true, yeah. old ass fucking house. The ten feet away, you know? I think we pick up the cat sound on the... Oh my god. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> she's, 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 she's like hitting the she's fucking tripod, dude. Oh, one thing you forgot. You mentioned while we were watching Halen, but you didn't mention it, was uh, Captain Spaulding's shirt when the cops come to, to investigate him. He, he's wearing a shirt with a pig with a cop hat on it, and it just says, uh, Pigs is beautiful on yeah. his shirt. That was fucking it, funny. In the opening scene, too, his shirt was, uh, if, I, if I wanted to hear an asshole, like, fart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's also uh, the cereal that Tiny brings to the final girl in the oh, basement. Okay. Agatha Krispies. I, I, I don't think I ever know. Really? Yeah, it yeah, made me laugh, dude. I thought it was fucking funny. That whole scene was gold, dude. Agatha. She was like, can you let me go? He's like, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was I also thought scene. that was fucking funny. That was a good scene. Literally, the first time she asks, please let me go. He's like... Okay, <laughs> I'm sure. her. Otis kidnaps her again. Walks downstairs. Tiny's just there eating Agatha Krispies, <laughs> full of milk yeah. everywhere. <laughs> milk all over the fucking scene. It's good stuff. I liked Tiny a lot. He was yeah, sick. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what do you guys was. think? There's one. There's one shot we didn't talk about. There's a random insert of a like a like a weird schizo homeless dude. Uh, African American gentleman. He's holding yes sign. with the shotgun. He's yeah. holding yes. a sign that says "Ask me about the Lord and the Satan." Mm-hmm. What? What was that all about? I don't even think it has proper meaning. You don't I think, think so? That's I think I think yeah. it's part of that Middle America, yeah, yeah. just just back country yeah, yeah. shit. You know, because there's a lot of places like that, a lot kind of lawless. You know, just for the culture. Yeah, for the culture. Yeah. Same mm-hmm. as the Sasquatch. It's right, a, yeah. The, the, the skunk ate the, had dirty relations with my wife. And he's yelling like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. It's just part of the. It's almost as if you're flicking channels like at the beginning when you go to the right announcer who's talking. Okay, it's like uh, world building you. almost. You know? Yeah, it's it's part of you're watching TV late night. It's the fucking whatever Saturday night horror movie. Or yeah, something. It's yeah. Like late night Americana. So yeah, so all of, all of those things, just just to add to the culture. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's what we think. I think so. Yeah. Or the feel of it. Right. It was yeah. kind of cool where he's saying, "Ask about the Lord and Satan." When Jerry was asking about Satan, yeah, the entire first half of the movie, yeah. Doctor Satan. Have you guys seen the original Doctor Satan movie? No, no I think it's from the forties or fifties. Oh, it's actually a thing. Yeah, well, it was a character, a horror movie character. I haven't seen the movie though, but I'm pretty sure it's a. a I have movie no from idea. Then. Yeah, but I think he just ripped the name. I don't think anything yeah. else has oh, to do okay. with anything. Okay. Yeah, the rest of my notes are all just shots, so we can we can. We favorite can, shots? Favorite. We can go into favorite shots. Favorite, okay. Yeah, yeah. Who wants to go first? Halen, you're the yeah, guest yes. of honor. Favorite shot? Favorite scene? Um, favorite something? You go first, buddy. I loved... Um, I liked when Denise was running, when she was in the bunny suit, and they panned out to that graveyard shot for that one split second. I thought that was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved when they were in the trenches, when those like ghouls mm-hmm. with the eyes came out and got her. Underground, underground, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Reminded me of, like the Vietnamese like trench warfare, like mm. it was kind of cool, like like lowering into the water. Um, and I like the whole Doctor Satan lair kind of thing. That was really cool. Like that was like yeah. well put together. Like that was a good set. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was like, sick good set details. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sick. It's true with like the the upper yeah. balcony, the lower. Yeah, very uh, very Elder Scrolls. Yeah, yeah it's true. Yeah, oddly yeah. enough. Yeah. Well, again, very. Theatrical, a very theatrical yes. set for oh, yeah. for a movie. Yeah, especially since it's just from one point of view, like a theater. Yeah. You know, I just see yeah. this because it, it easily could have just been just a, a run of the mill layer. Yeah, but because like she the layer, like she w- walked in on something that was already happening. Yeah, and it was like a yeah, yeah, it was cool. But even in terms of the set, like the Doctor Satan's lab had his layer had layers yeah. yeah right like there was the upper part the stairs the section the back like it was yeah. like where'd was... that guy even come from 
Yep. Like there was even yeah, further exactly. stuff yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, cool. it made it's definitely because I, I find a lot of that's a good point. A lot of horror sets don't feel lived in. Yeah, these right, ones you watch do. it, it's like yeah, that's just a fuck. You're that's, passing that's through for the first yeah. time with everybody else, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I think um, I love the Saw franchise, yeah. but a lot, a lot of the Saw sets feel like sets. Yeah, because yeah. you're like, there's nothing beyond this room. There's no way. There's, there's no like uh, dirty dishes in the corner that yeah, he was exactly. eating lunch yeah. or something like that. Yeah, I rewatched the first Saw recently. Yeah, that movie really fucking. Oh, that's good. It holds up. It's fucking good. Yeah. yeah. This is the Doctor Satan I was talking about. Oh, okay. So that holds up to it was oh, like cool. his goggles, like his spectacles kind of thing. So it was definitely a reference then. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Right. Or if like not just the name alone. Yeah. 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 In uh, an allegory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's Copperhead. Mm. I think that's one that's cool. Was, <laughs> was Dr. Satan the hero? Have you seen that movie? No. No, but I've seen that poster before. Oh, that's okay. like a used fucking poster. Dante, favorite shot? I have two like my fa- like my favorite's got to be the fucking uh, the execution with the gun. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so fucking good. Yeah, it's really just good. where it's placed in the movie. The movie's so fast paced and there's all these cuts. And you see this one still shot of that is amazing. Yeah. But uh, I also really love when she first enters the the Doctor Satan lounge and they yeah. have all these like, you know the 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 split screen and the two eye thing and she's like whoa whoa whoa. It was so music video. Yeah. I loved it. Mm-hmm. Those are my favorite shots. For me, I have a couple that I saved. Uh, one, I find that just more for like, when I think of the movie, I think of this shot. I think it was more from when I was a kid. I thought it was very funny. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I here. remember. Yeah. Just it's, Dwight Schrute's fucking face. Yeah, it's when Dwight is like recoiling his head so far back. He's got ten chins. <laughs> yeah. When I think of the movie, or when I see his character in the movie, I think of this yeah. shot. Yeah. No, my favorite shot. Most memorable. That. That's, yeah. yeah. When I think of the movie, I think of that. I also picked this one up. I thought the this dinner, was fun. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, That's the dinner. Tiny's POV when he first meets Tom the, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the kids. I'll stick a picture of the hot pussy liquor. Of course. Just the set piece is so nice. Yeah, yeah. That's a sick shot, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a sick one. There's a, that's that's a, well, actually the song, the Rob Zombie song. Yeah, this yeah, looks yeah. like you know, straight out of a music video. Yeah. It's, it's lit fucking red with the background. Well, more directors like should make movies like their music videos. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. For real. Uh, yeah. And I also just grabbed the Dr. Satan Establisher shot. Yeah. yeah. It's just because it's fucking cool. You got the I lights. Mean, you good got lighting. lighting. Talk about it up. Music video directors turned movie directors uh baz lerman yeah okay. you you uh he did uh gatsby with you know DiCaprio, mm-hmm. but i think romeo more and juliet, yeah. exactly more romeo yeah. plus juliet is more yeah. more to his style i fucking mm-hmm. love that movie yeah they're cool yeah they're really cool i mean that that's like a two-hour music video basically yeah, yeah. it's it's fucking sick when you get yeah. a good music video it's very well fucking... oh yeah like you have to know what you're doing editing and directing so okay wait so we're talking about music video right mm-hmm. and stuff like this if you guys were to pick a fucking song or a band or music, whatever music, what music is this movie? What well, movie would I happen? mean, it's hard to disassociate, it's hard to dissociate Rob Zombie. Rob Zombie. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I'm talking about like, um, Other than like for Rob me, this Zombie. is like a new metal movie, you know? Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, like, what's like, Maryland like Maryland Slipknot or, 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 or yeah. Corn kind of yeah. thing, you know? Man, you said, you said, yeah, Manson. I was thinking Man. Especially yeah. a lot of those guys' music videos are very middle Amer- Midwest, yeah. Middle America, yeah. like hillbilly shit, yeah. you know? What's that, the what's that guy? Texas. He's from Texas, but he does death metal. Rob. Frozen Soul? No, no, it's, it's just one guy. George W. Fuck. My brother would know. I don't remember now. But oh. he's a. Uh... Cemetery Rapist? No, no, it's a weird. It's a. It's one of those God. weird death metal names. It's like, where it's like a long, <laughs> like dodecahedron or some shit like that. It's like a sugar bomb? No, no, no. It's one. It's literally one guy. Spoil that. It's They're gonna get free merch now. <laughs> <So, laughs> they know about the free merch. Hey, you don't have to fucking oh. say it, bro. They have to watch two hours since before. Yeah, we have a we have a running thing where if anyone can read what's written on Nick's hat and comments on one of our posts, the name of that the name of that band, then they get free merch. I wear it every podcast. I've been eyeing this, this all band. day. Dude. Yeah. 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 Sick. Dude. Um, but yeah, like that very Midwest new metal, yeah. Yeah. early two thousands mm-hmm. kind of vibe. I, I see it so hard in this movie. Have you guys listened to the album that uh, has a thousand corpses kind of album? No, no. Album? it's all like the songs from the movie, right? That kind of bed the scenes. Well, I noticed in the credits one of the songs was straight up just House of a Thousand Corpses. So yeah, that's like the, yeah. the main, th- main yeah. song. Yeah, I mean, I think every song is is every everything in this movie is Rob Zombie. Yeah, yeah. 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 Even yeah. that album, he remixes all of them with verses and choruses yeah. and more movement, but with little. 
sound bites from the movie oh, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And the Pussy Licker song is fucking sick. Yeah. It's the song from the scene, but with their kind of conversation yeah. built in a bit. Yeah. Chopped, you know? Should we learn that? That'd be fun. I should we learn Pussy I'd Liquor? Be down, dude. We yeah. do, I have a mic and everything. We'd sing it. There you go. <laughs> that can be our new uh, monolith intro stinger. That would be fun. Dude, bad name? Pussy Liquor. Pussy liquor. Yeah. With a, a IQ. Yeah. Lee, what's your favorite shot? Um, I also wrote a few down. The The execution shot was one of my tops for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that shot. One, an early shot when. When the gang first gets to Captain Spaulding's gas and chicken shop, then pulling up at the gas station, it's just like a frame shot of like gas pumps, car, gas station, clown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, but it's the whole thing is exposed super green. Yeah. But just the framing of it all and the composition of it all, I think, is it's beautiful. Yeah. It's like textbook composition, mm-hmm. perfect shot. Mm hmm. That was the first one that really struck me. And then later on was when the car breaks down. There's a few shots. He, I don't think Rob Zombie reuses the same shot, but he reuses this, the same angle and framing to shoot the car from a distance at a Dutch angle. Where it's like, because the car breaks down, and it's a little tilted because the, the tire is flat or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a little tilted, they're stuck in the mud. But he tilts the camera a little more, and, and he frames, it's like a perfect third shot yeah, sure. of like the car in the third and then just a rainy foggy back okay, yeah. it's just a nice mm-hmm. horror speaking of suck car shot speaking of funny ass cuts was when they're in the car and the fucking brother comes and they all get scared because he's wearing this fucking wolf head thing yeah. and they're all like freaking out he just and he's like and they're like oh is that the guy with the car you see and just cuts to him towing the car like, yeah, like yeah, a yeah. normal person yeah, you know? <laughs> That first scene you said, or the first shot you said, where it's the gas station. Yeah. I think the transition in between scenes before that one is my favorite throughout the movie. Yeah. It has the clown and the dunce cap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In black and white. That's my favorite one. That's yeah. awesome, that one. And then the, I think the only one I wrote down that I haven't mentioned yet was, uh, oh no, there's two. So there's one, I, I have the run, the run rabbit girl when she's going through the graveyard. Yeah. All the cemetery shots I think are fucking sick. Mm-hmm. If I had to pick my favorite shot, it's definitely just one of the exposition shots of, a, of the cemetery no, the crosses sure. love that shit but um when when the final girl crawls out of dr satan's underground mm-hmm. lair and she's crawling through the uh it's like hay it looks like hay dead grass she's exiting from the earth mm-hmm. um I, I jotted that down too it was one of my favorite shots because it, it reminded me of the uh, evil dead yeah. poster of the girl yeah exactly emerging from the earth yeah mm-hmm. and it's like a, it's it, it, it like the, the that section of the film is so dark and so it's nighttime right it's dark it's gloomy you're underground and then all of a sudden it's a daytime and she's emerging and it, there's hope you know mm-hmm. it's hopeful it's it, like and that's that's how they really get you to bite on the twist of her being brought back in by Captain Spaulding yeah but that image of her emerging it's like rebirth from the grave mm-hmm. she should have died but she didn't she mm-hmm. made it you know yeah and then boom right back into it so i i think that that's one of my that's one of my favorites but i, I think in terms of of shots maybe the cemetery or the gas station mm-hmm. but in terms of uh not thematically but just in terms of symbolically and and what the shot means and where it's placed and everything like that i think her emerging from the earth was one of my favorites it was cool very cool yeah it's your classic fucking yeah exactly shot. yeah, yeah. So I can say. that's good directing that shot too exactly it's close wide yeah in, at, usually you know. think of that too as like the undead coming from the tree mm-hmm. like a zombie or something but it's her oh, sure. that's her liberation almost. yeah yeah, yeah exactly. coming back from death yeah. um, I'm just thinking Rob now Zombie? No, oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just thinking now too. the name, dude. <laughs> the shot right before that cool execution shot where they open the shed and, slow and it's revealed. Like, oh, that was like, really cool too. I feel like right. not only like framing the entire villain in one shed, like everything that's happening is happening cool in one too. shed. <laughs> yeah. But also, like, it's not, like, they're not leaving you cookie crumbs for the cops to find. Like, they just open it and that's it. Like, okay, this is what's happening. Yeah. We're up and to they're speed. all strung up with antlers. Yeah. And it's, and super, it's almost like there's yeah. different levels of how they're torturing people. Like, you have, because you have dead people in the background. You have the one of the girlfriends strung up. Yeah. 
on the cross. Like it's cool. Like it's it's a cool way to reveal what's going on. Mm-hmm. Like, I think the only reason I didn't because that 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 shot struck me as well. But the only I I remember not noting it because uh, the camera never actually focuses mm. in that shot. That oh, shot yeah. stays blurry. Yeah, oh, and it yeah. happens so quick. Kind of true, yeah. It, I, never it was hard re- to focus. Yeah, on, it never yeah. really focuses, and it never you never really settle on that shot. Well, it, imagine, it on imagine you're the cop from that yeah. POV. Like, what the fuck am I looking at? Yeah. 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 Like, this is more than yeah. my brain can comprehend. Like, yeah. it's like, that always stood out to me as a kid, too. The pentagram carved into her chest. Yeah. Like, and I remember that image yeah. as a kid going, oh, fuck. Yeah. Con- <laughs> con- con- contextually <laughs> and story-wise, it's, it's, it's definitely... It makes sense, and it's mm-hmm. definitely... A big scene, but I I, I do wish yeah. we as a viewer I would have had time to focus on focus it. on it, sit there for at least a second more mm-hmm. to really suck it in and then move on. Maybe maybe it would have been nice as close ups. Yeah, we get some after though. We get some after. Yeah, yeah, some slow pans. Yeah. I'm not crazy about close ups. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess I'll. They're very close. close. If it's really close, it's cool. But if it's just kind of whatever, yeah. but a, a normal a, head a shoulders, scene like that, yeah, I want to see it all. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's more gore spectacle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Letterboxd? Yeah, I already got a, a funny on. review primed. To the next segment. Sound. So, first review. It's a three-star by a guy named Colin. Dot, dot, dot. His favorite movies are... What? Keep going. His favorite movies are Love, Lies, Bleeding, Never Snack heard. Shack... Dune Snack Part Shack. Two, okay, bad stuff. Uh, that's one of his favorite movies. Is and Dune Part sixty two. minutes. Sixty, the show. I, th- I think the funniest. No, thing I've I don't know. Seen, funniest thing I've ever seen on TV was on sixty minutes, and it was a, a show about Alzheimer's, and it's mm. like really sad leading up to this, and they're like, yeah, the doctor he doesn't remember his wife, he doesn't know anything. And they're in the doctor's office, and the the doctor shows the Alzheimer's patient a picture of a kangaroo. He goes, can you tell me what this is? And he points at the body and goes, a Dogen and a Gogan. And he points at his tail and it cuts away. I cried <laughs> for an hour. An hour at Dogen and Gogan, the fucking kangaroo. He's cured. It was awesome. He's not that far off, though. That's the thing, right? Like, <laughs> the hell? essence of kangaroo is said, you know? Like, if you said Dogen Gogan to me, I, mean, I, I think, okay, a kangaroo, you know? <laughs> Dante has Alzheimer's too. Yeah, dude. <laughs> That's the best thing I've ever seen on TV. Are you looking at uh, bad reviews or good reviews? This is a three star. Okay, mid So it was just the top review. Okay. And he said, um, this is how I imagine the slightly racist white country girls with Bible passages in their Instagram bios at my university act like when they get home. <laughs> yeah, as Otis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Tied Pod Racer. No favorites. But some recent horror rev- reviews. Uh, they say, hey, poopy pants, this movie is shit. This is the first and last Rob Zombie movie I'm ever going to watch. The editor needs to be fired and kept out of Hollywood forever. It's inverted, dude. It's backwards. Yeah. It's backwards. That is so backwards, bro. Yeah. This is one of the Not best true. editing ever, yeah, bro. Yeah, it really is. He's never edited a video no. before. Like, he's never been on Adobe Premiere, you know? I'm a professional. We're best. Yes. It's true, you're, you're <laughs> a professional, yeah. It's good editing. Is that true? Is that true? It's RDS. <laughs> no, probably well, one of those, dude. <laughs> um, uh, Scott Pedler. No favorites again. I'm not picking people with no favorites, dude. We gotta get some favorites in here. There you go. Robin. Nice. Good name. Robin from Czech. Bad country. Good name. <laughs> bad country, dude. <laughs> Depends who you ask. He, uh, favorite movies... After Hours, Blue Velvet, Before Sunrise, and Reanimator. Okay. Okay. Those okay. Some good favorites. Mm-hmm. Blue Velvet's a fucking classic. Yeah. Reanimator. Yeah. Reanimator too. Yeah. yeah. And the before, it. before something, the before trilogy is fucking good. He's watched mm-hmm. the recent of those. Yeah. Uh, he uh, he says, okay, I have actually had quite high expectations for this movie, but Rob Zombie should have seriously only stayed in the music industry. What? Because movies definitely aren't his thing. Okay, he's done 15 fucking movies. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> M- movies, music videos are movies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, shout Overall, out. the editing was shit. <laughs> the gore was fine-ish, but the worst thing about this film is the script itself. But that's someone who doesn't get it. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't get it. Yeah, this entire movie felt as if it were written by a fourteen-year-old guy who just discovered who John Wayne Gacy is and got sexually aroused from it. 
This is someone who watches the before trilogy. Back <laughs> you know? What the fuck? This is someone who watches uh, like um, the Sixth Sense. You know, <laughs> and gets scared every time. <laughs> yeah, they get scared. Oh, the devil! Oh, nothing, oh chess. <laughs> nothing about this kept me even remotely interested. And trust me, I tend to be amused by bad movies, but this was too bad. What? Too horrible for me to. You've never watched enjoy. Perpetrator? No. no. <laughs> Perpetrator is good. Yonki. <laughs> Is that the whole review? Yeah. Okay, this is delusional. Yeah, dogs. Yeah, that's yeah. I got I got one by uh, Silent Dabs with two Z's. Nice. His favorite movies are Long Legs, uh, Spawn, Come on. Spawn movie, uh, Spider Man Beyond the Spider Verse, and Return to Silent Hill. Hell yeah. Return to Silent Hill? Yeah. I don't fucking know. Not the original, but Return yeah, to Silent Yeah, this guy, I don't know. I don't know what this guy's all about. Really? And he said, being able to hear Red Hot Pussy Liquor on the big screen was phenomenal. There you go. Five stars. Nice. <laughs> nice. nice. Good, good yeah. review. Good right. review, yeah. That was good. Uh, Robert. He's a pro member. Ooh. For, that, for, that means for you're paid, right? Also, Colin with a dot. tears. Oh. I don't know what pro means. Ca- Colin dot 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 the one with the horrible uh, the the one with the the white racist uh, college girls that he uh, he was a patron. He was a patron. Yeah. I think that's top tier. Wow. Yeah. Um. So Robin's favorite movies are her. Yes. Mm-hmm. Spider Verse as well. Watch the podcast. Oh, we got fifty five thousand views. On that. The Kid Detective. What'd you call me? And Drive. Hey, oh, that's a good movie. Yeah. We all we're big we're yeah. we're big rapid yeah, fans. Yeah, 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 we're big yeah, yeah. I think we've done yeah. most of his movies on here. We've done two. I thought we did. Va- I think we, we only, Valhalla. No, we only did yeah. only God forgives. We've done one. Really? But I think we just oh, talk yeah. about him a lot. I think yeah, we've yeah. referenced a lot of references. Yeah. We've re- we've ref ref him. Fuck, we should do Valhalla one time. Yeah, I don't think I've seen. It. I, I don't think I've seen. It. I think I've, no, I have. No, I have. Okay, it's green. It's a lot of green and red. That movie, right? I think red and black and white. There's some green in that. Dude. It was we'll green. Maybe green. Who hates What's Drive? Is it Zach who hated Drive? Maybe, yeah. yeah. Oh, you did Zach. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is Zach, yeah. Anyways, Robin says, he gives it one, half a star, half a star as well. He says, honestly, a waste of time. Decent setting and a standard premise let down by garbage dialogue. Character relationships that don't feel genuine. Horrible editing, not to mention horrible acting across the board. Any note about editing, though, it doesn't make sense. I agree. It's I so agree. good. I agree. And the dialogue yeah. is hilarious. He's, he edits. He edits movies all day. That's what that he does. My job. That's, I guess. that's what my job. Does. <laughs> it's his job. I struggle to see the appeal of this, frankly. And the only saving grace is that it's not that long. For sure, writing off this director for good. Damn. I did, this is his peak movie. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't like this, you're not gonna like Ralph. Yeah, no, for what's, sure. Yeah, yeah, what's yeah. good dialogue in a horror movie? I don't this, this to do this, this is hilarious. Is no, this is good. Yeah. It's, it's so joke. well written. Like, what, is, what is he looking for in dialogue in a horror movie? Oh yeah, exactly. Like what? What's he's looking for, for some uh, hipster poetic shit? You know, mm-hmm. like, it's not... supposed to be like gross and funny at the same time. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like it's such like a that was a horror like, the slapstick oh, version, but for horror, mm-hmm. like that's what I'm looking for in a horror movie. Like I'm looking for like. Okay, I got like a slasher, little bit. Like, yeah, little like, I'm not yeah. looking for people to be like poetic or insightful. Like, Wait, what was the what was the what was I mean, good reading? dialogue in, in horror is the lighthouse. That's fair. That's not even yeah. that's not even I horror. Say, yeah, I wouldn't yeah, say that's horror. I wouldn't call that horror. Yeah, I would call that horror. It's magic realism. Like, magic horror. realism. Yeah. yeah. Magic realism. Co- co- cosmic yeah. horror. Speaking thing. of the magic realism, have yeah. you guys seen Tigers Are Not Afraid? No. That's a fucking good movie, dude. Oh yeah. In terms of magic realism. I'm gonna favorite that on Letterbox. Watch this. Tigers are not afraid, dude. And I'm pretty sure it's a Shutter original. It's on Shutter. And the director of that movie. Oh, I thought I thought they did something else that was really cool too. No, it's just that. But uh, it's a fucking good movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's very uh, imagine City of God, mm-hmm. but magic realism horror. I'm hooked. With like. Children, children. I'm hooked. Like ten, like eight, I'm ten. Dude, it's actually it's fucking good. Well, watch that shit tomorrow. It's fucking good. Okay, I got a review. Yeah, this one's gonna actually uh, provide some insights to the movie. Ooh. By Audrey Lorraine. Her favorite movies are The Game That Kills, Walt Disney Presents Goofy hum- Hockey Homicide, Pucked, and Gay Blades. It's a lot of Gay hockey. Blades. It's a lot of hockey stuff. They're all hockey movies. Nice. Okay. Big Disregard. hockey fan. We're from Montreal. Big hockey. Like, we, we, I don't think we're into hockey, but 
where we're from isn't talking. RDS. RDS, baby, Mongolia. Uh, so she, I'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's like a, it's like a long ass <laughs> oh, fucking, oh. it's a, it's a. My water. My water, dude. <laughs> the fucking long ass review. So I'm not going to read the whole thing. Uh, I'll, I'll get a thing in a second. Actually, you read it. I'll, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go clean that up. Cut you read that. that. Cut that. Just the first paragraph. Just read the first paragraph. No surprise that this was initially conceived as a haunted house that was eventually titled American Nightmare. This oh. is an all-American film in that it hates America. Notions of civilization, of respectability, are trounced as bratty teens and bubbling cops, who might be sympathetic characters in another film, come and go throughout the narrative disposed in a rapid-fire fashion to make room for the real stars, the anarchic Firefly family. I always liked the Ray Zombie foregrounds, the killers, parentheses. Later, he gets really good at eliciting sympathy from them, even if we are actually, even we actually root for them, end parentheses. And while the family hasn't yet been perfected, as they are in the later installments, the performers still managed to knock it out of the park. I miss Sid Haig like I miss a few other actors. Yeah. I disagree with the comment about like it gets better in the later oh, yeah. films. I don't find a, a deeper connection. No. I think it's more of the filmmaking that works better. Right. Or more like standard. Yeah, but Does I didn't know it was a haunted house at first. Does she mean in the trilogy? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Because the trilogy directly goes downhill every yeah, single movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. I agree. But that was a five yeah. star review. This person really liked it. Yeah. What was the other movie there? Tigers? Tigers are not afraid. But I don't agree that they dispose of these secondary characters that are supposed to not be disposed of. Like, it's. Like they're that they're there as mm-hmm. tropes that are often yeah. cast me another candle. One person's always supposed to survive. Right? Yeah. Like one person's supposed to get away. Like when do cops ever survive a horror flick like this? Like it's not, not often, yeah. Like they're supposed to come in midway, give you hope for That's salvation and yeah. they die. Oh dude, this is gonna be a good one. Pit Peaks from Brazil. Brazil, come to Brazil. Come. Favorite Same <laughs> bit. <laughs> favorite movies, Clockwork Orange. Okay. Mulholland Drive. Okay. The Godfather. Okay. Scarface. Okay. Okay. So kind of a run of the mill selection for favorite yeah. movies. Not very original. No mm-hmm. offense to you, Papiks. Good movies though. Good movies. Yes. Good movies. Good movies. Respectable. Yes. To, to place them as your favorite to me tells me that you have no personality. Yeah, Mulholland Drive means you're stupid. Kyle Reese, yeah. shots fired, dude. Fuck out of here, Mulholland Drive's amazing. <laughs> All right. uh, he gives it a, a one, and, one and a half out of ten, but then gives it a no, sorry, one and a half out of five, and then gives it a two out of ten. So his math is wrong there, because one and a half out of five is three out of ten. So, oh, so you can't, you can't do math there. there. Uh, he, he says I watched it expecting to be good and fun, but it's genuinely garbage. I don't like it at all. The photography is so bad that my head was hurting sometimes, just trying to understand what was happening. And I'm not even kidding. The dialogues are so edgy and some of the worst I've ever heard in a long time. Nothing has a bit of effort put into it. The story is far from being interesting. I think Sid Haig saves this entire film. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, but what, Mulholland Drive's better floating camera out of focus? Uh, with the fucking <laughs> Mahal, Mulholland Drive has worse cinematography than Yeah, that. exactly, yeah. And I For love, sure. I think Mulholland Drive's a 10 out of 10 movie. Yeah, but... You know? Looks worse than this movie. It does, yeah, but yeah. Mahal drives a ten out of ten for a whole other reasons. You know, mm-hmm. I think I'm I, I'm sensing a theme here with bad reviews, where everyone's dunking on dialogue and editing. Yeah, but those are two things that that they're obviously not understanding because mm-hmm. the the dialogue isn't meant to be profound, or, deadpan, or serious. Yeah. Like it's it is, but it's funny. well written. Like, it is I think it's well written. Yeah. You know, and the. Uh, the editing. I mean, we've we've fucking spoken on the editing ad nauseum tonight. It's paced perfect. Yeah, and it's risky and interesting. It's not some normal blockbuster editing. Yeah, you know, even if you've seen it before, this was the first one. You know. Yeah. What are some? Uh... Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Ian. Wow. Whose yeah. favorites are The Insider, No Country for Old Men. Uh, Man on Fire and Bad Boys 2. No, that's yeah. a good one, dude. Okay. That's a he, good bad He's boys. had the best lineup of movies so that's far. Right now. That's pretty good. 
Point number one. Mm. Ari Aster rips off Rosemary's Baby and The Wicker Man. Okay, sure. Wow. Such a master delivering the greatest horror movies of all time. Note two. Quentin Tarantino spends his entire career paying homage to spaghetti westerns, martial arts movies, and more. One of the goats. Point number three. Rob Zombie plays homage to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and debuts with a unique style that he displays in each and every one of his films. No such and hack and terrible filmmaker. So he's dunking on people who hate the movie. He's saying, like, people love Ari Aster and people love Quentin Tarantino yeah. for for referencing these movies and being so Hollywood. But here Rob Zombie is referencing this whole other aspect of Hollywood and, yeah. and cinema same. history. Doing the same thing, mm-hmm. but people dunk on him. Yeah. That's that makes review. sense. Yeah, that nice makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Quentin Tarantino is literally what, in this movie. I get what he's... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this movie, this movie reminds me a lot of Grindhouse. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's that. it's that style, yeah. right? It's pulpy. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, like, I, I, I'm pretty sure Quentin Tarantino loves this movie. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like, here's the thing, right? I feel like if you ask any filmmaker or artist, mm-hmm. especially ones that like horror movies, yeah. if they're like, this is, they're going to fucking like this movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They like this movie, you know? It's too much fun not to like, though. I don't know how you can not like it. It's too much fun. I agree. I don't understand. People are like, oh, oh, editing dialogue. Like, dude, can't you, like... Just have a good time, asshole. Yeah. Yeah, but then it's, people say that to me about Marvel because I hate Marvel. They're like, just have a good time, dude. It's just yeah, a fun that watch. Sucks, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Marvel yeah, right, sucks, right, right, right. dude. Plus, yeah, also, also, this room. movie, yeah. this movie has like interesting things done with the camera, interesting done with the shots. Like, I feel like if you're a filmmaker and you see Rob Zombie do, and doing it good, mm-hmm. you're like, wow, he did all this stuff. And you're like, if you're a filmmaker, you know. But if you're not a filmmaker, you just think it's bad. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things, right? Yeah. But this movie... The, it's like why Kanye West like, likes Burzum, you know? Alright, let's not mention... And he likes he likes Death Grips, like, like you know. Yeah, well, I mean, Death Grips and Ask Burzum, I can't say that I like Burzum. I like Burzum. You don't like Burzum? You like Burzum? He likes Burzum. I call it Burzum, because I like Burzum. it that much. Dude. I, I like... I, I like... Archfire. Mayhem. Yeah. Really? Sure. But... I hate Mayhem. What? what? Burtsum? Burtsum's way better than Mayhem. Bro. I like them both equally. Yeah, this is funny, dude. Asking, dude. <laughs> dude, you like Sick album, dude. I like his new stuff? His fucking midi medieval. I still like it, dude. I still like I mean, it's... I put that on the background. Yeah, but nasty, that's it. His background, dude. dude. Like it's... Yeah, let's yeah, ambience. But it's just it's just to say that like artists like this kind of shit that pushes boundaries, but yes. normal people don't like that kind yes. of shit, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's why I don't understand why they're trashing on the dialogue because the dialogue has nothing to do with this movie. Like the, I, every single time someone speaks, I'm like, oh, that's this character that's in every other movie played to the max. Yeah, because that's he's trying to he's trying to emulate like it's everything ho- that's yeah. in horror movies. Like, yeah, you don't so you don't have to think about the characters. Just appreciate the cool edits. Well, that's why appreciate it's house- the cool transitions. Mm-hmm. Appreciate what's yeah. going on. Like, don't worry. Yeah. Like, don't worry about the characters and what they're saying. I mean, that's why it's House of a Thousand Corpses, not House of Ten Corpses. Mm-hmm. Right? Like the dialogue it's, it's is trash. It's cranked to 11. Yeah, it's yeah. cranked. It's yeah. saturated with what it is. But like, why are you harping on it? Like, what did you even learn from the dialogue that, like, hurt you that much that you're going to review about it? Like, it's not... And it's tastefully done. Dude, watch this movie on mute. It, it painted awesome. me a yeah. picture of every single character. music, playing yeah. music behind it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the title, though. It's so, like, pulpy. Like, you know what you're getting into. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Put it yeah. on with a title like that. Yeah. yeah. Like, if you're if you're putting on a movie called House of a Thousand Corpses and you're expecting Shakespeare-level dialogue, exactly. then maybe watch something else. Yeah. And, like, anyone who's saying, like, oh, the editing fucking sucks, try and make a transition like that. And, a, and a make it work. Like yeah, yeah, just try. In 2000, also. Yeah, exactly. With, like, yeah. this is fucking Primitive video fucking cassette. stuff, yeah. Just try and have a fun time and see how it yeah. looks. Yeah. This is pretty good. And then get your wife half-naked on screen <laughs> and see how you feel about it. <laughs> now we go on to our reviews? Yeah, what do you guys mm-hmm. think? Adam Halen, are you from, do you remember our review system? No. All right, so for Halen and all the, the and all the new viewers, a five is perfectly average. Normal movie, good movie, and it's out of five. ten with decimals. Decibel, de- decimals. decimals. It's like are a we five point five. Are we going in between point five? Whatever you're we feeling. We usually do halves. We usually do. We stick. We try to stick to halves, but whatever you're feeling. Yeah, you're whatever you feel. Yeah, but like yeah, exactly. Like a five. Like a lot of times, people generally, like everything into account. Every movie you've ever. 
in that picture every movie you've ever seen in your entire life. Like Hale and Hale. Ha, ha, ha. A five is a perfectly average movie. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just a, it's a movie. Yeah, it's watchable. It's There's nothing wrong with it. Like that stands out. It's yeah. just yeah. normal. Average movie. And like a ten, it's like goaded best movie ever. You gotta say yeah. a ten. You can never give anything a ten. Yeah, it's like finger skating movie. rules. So, can I give it a seven point nine? Sure. Yeah. Sure. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, why does this? What what stops it from breaching the eight? Yeah. Because it's not what I look for in a horror movie. Mm. Okay. I've seen much worse in the sense of gore and slasher that I would have liked to see more fucked up stuff. Okay. But it was fun. Like, I had more fun watching it than, like, I'll think about it when I'm in bed that night. Right. So, 7.9. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I like to be spooked by my horror movies sure yeah it definitely it's not a, it's not a, it's, you're talking to the three guys who are so desensitized bro it's that's what I'm a, saying like yeah doctor Unless doctor real, Satan I would have fucked my shit up when I was like 10 or 11 like yeah. that would have just rocked me until I was like old enough to figure out what the fuck I just watched yeah. but now I'm just like okay cool that's a cool costume cool movie the, mm-hmm. the movie that scared me the most in my entire life what was Signs. Dude, be fucking too, dude. Like M. Night Shyamalan, I swear when I was God, a child, dude, yeah. I stayed up for a week, dude. I couldn't sleep thinking about fucking aliens. Dude, dude. the shot when the alien walks across yeah, dude. the first yeah, shot, dude. that scared the shit out of me. That movie dude. fucked me up That's when I was a hilarious. kid. Wait, that's really funny. The, the only movie that truly scares me to this day Monsters University. is We Need to Talk About Kevin. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. You gotta watch that yeah. shit, dude. It's not even a horror movie, but... It's so realistic, bro. It's yeah. just like, fuck, bro. Fuck. What's your, what's your, uh... I mean, me, like, when I was uh, 10, 11, I would have given this, like, a 9, probably. Shit. And then, like, three, two or three years ago when I rewatched it, I would have gave it, like, a 4. 3 or a 4. Damn. And now, rewatching yeah. it, I'm giving it a 9. There you go. Ooh, what what changed Dude. between the first nine and the and the four? I think I became less uh, pretentious, maybe, because I feel like now I take more into account the viewing experience of the mm. movie. Now it's post Concordia. Yeah, rather yeah. than just technical and you know yeah. it's so to a formula that you're paying attention to, and you go, "Oh, he's straight from the formula bit, but not in the right way." So I don't like it. This, but it's more of I'm sitting in the theater, I'm enjoying it, I'm doing this, I'm doing that while it's going on. I think that changed for me. Like viewing context. Kind exactly, of thing, yeah. yeah. The situation you're in, and yeah. you know you're watching yeah. a movie, you're not in yeah. the story. You're like adding that. subjectivity. Why yeah, did you take exactly. that into account when you gave it a four? I don't know. I really didn't like it. I remember having a bad time going, like, this is cheesy, this is stupid, it's not fucking. Did you watch it all the way through? Yeah. 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 But I think that makes sense. I mean, I think if I would have watched it, Year like a few years ago, I think I would have had that same experience because yeah. I understand what, you're, what you mean yeah. about you being in that mindset of of being that pretentious artsy cinema guy yeah. and watching this and be like, "Oh, come on!" Mm-hmm. Oh, I used to think so strict. Yeah, too. Like, yeah, yeah. No, I fucking walked. It's a POV shot. What are you an asshole? You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now it's more fun. Yeah, yeah. Times, watching yeah. these things. Yeah, I think I know what you mean. I, I would also give it a nine. I'm giving it a nine. You're a nine? I'm giving it a nine, yeah. I think it's a fucking, it's an amazing movie. I mean, I, I think the things that I don't like about it are so minute and things that really don't detract from the movie that much. It's really just me trying to be picky. Mm-hmm. And even all, like, those random scenes, like the 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 pussy liquor yeah. and the, the random homeless guy and mm-hmm. the Sasquatch thing like all those things that don't make sense I like that they're there mm-hmm. I, they don't make sense to me that if they weren't there I would like the movie just as much but I still like that they're there mm-hmm. you know you even, think of those after almost. yeah I mean and even the things I don't like about this movie are the things that make this movie likable yeah. in a way like the negative and the editing yeah. and all that stuff like it's mm-hmm. it's so much style and even though like I think at times I'm like okay maybe too much dial it back a little bit but it's only ever just a just a fucking fraction Mm -hmm. Uh, I think I think a a solid nine for me for sure even the fact that this movie holds up with horror movies that have budgets of tens of millions of dollars now oh yeah kind of speaks to Mm -hmm. yeah how cool of a movie it is I can't I can't allow it the nine I can't for me so for me like uh 
in my head, like, I was saying, 10 is the best movie ever made, right? right? For me, a 9 is, like, a 9 is, like, a movie that is a contender to be best movie ever made, but it's, like, too new or whatever. Like, I gave Barbie a 9, right? Mm. But Barbie has this, like, greater, profound meaning, you know? And for me, a 9 has to have that kind of greater artistic concept meaning. This one kind of does, but it's not as explicit with it as Barbie, you know what I mean? So me, I, I, I disagree, but I know what you mean. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it has it, but it's not, like... Different sense. It's not as profound, you know? It's, mm-hmm. it's not, like, it's not, like, explicitly, like, super high concept. But, like, I mean, Otis I, is onto something, and maybe if they continued with that... I think, think monologue to the artist, it is as profound. Yeah, it's some kind of cultural critique. I think the, 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 the themes and the ideas and the messages Rob Zombie's playing with in this movie are as important to him... As... But are they intentional? That's the question. Oh, I, I think this movie's fully intentional. Yeah. I think everything in here is 100%. I think it's a, a lot of it is, but I think it's still like not like as like an art piece, you okay. know? Okay. Yeah. For me, a nine's got to be like, you yeah. know, crazy. So, I mean, for sure, Rob Zombie's having fun. Yeah, but Barbie is more of sure. an essay, and Rob yeah. Zombie's more of a. Hey, yeah, man. but that's why I yeah. give it the 8.5. Yeah, okay. 8.5? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Well, that's funny. Like, yeah. you guys thought I was going to give it like a 7 or some <laughs> shit. No, 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 no. I fucking love this movie, right? Yeah. Like for me, it just it just it's it just on the cusp of being non- that art house yeah. kind of nine yeah. nine. Because yeah. yeah. for me, like something like like you know, um, like two thousand if two thousand one is like a ten. Yeah. Blade, I'd say I'd say like Blade Runner is also like, I'd say Blade Runner twenty forty nine is like a nine point five. Oh. Sure. Barbie's a nine. Okay. You know, this is like yeah, really sure. high concept movies. Yeah. You know. What's another example of a movie we got on our thing that's uh, that would be a, like a nine there? Um, no, alien. Monsters University. Hard to glass. Alien. Alien. No, Alien. Monsters University. Alien <laughs> 9. Yeah. Uh, what alien else? Um, <laughs> they push the technology. Eraserhead? Who would you give that? That's a 10. Eraserhead is That's a 10. That's a 10. That's a 10. Yeah. Mulholland Drive is like a 9.5, yeah, you know? But these are greater, like, oh, you know... I don't like that. <laughs> these, are, these, are, these are movies that are important to, like, the movie... Landscape, you know, right, 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 right. One of, uh, House of Silent Corpse is important to the horror landscape, but it's not like you know, crazy like super art house movie. And for me, mm-hmm. you have to be like that kind of movie to be. Oh, where, where is Rob Zombie from? Like, is he from, from Middle States. America? But like, is he like? Has this come from like a, his experience? Oh, fucking with probably. His but even if it's not from his experience, if he loves, he's from Massachusetts. So much, yeah, if he loves it so much, that's he's so really? into it. Yeah, he's from Massachusetts. Okay. I know that. I was gonna because go, that gonna might go have been it. that might have been his critique of where he came from. Like, yeah, but Massachusetts used... is not like that. Massachusetts, yeah. and New England. This is that's like, what I'm saying. Though, but like, this this movie is more like Texas. Midwest yeah. kind of uh, Appalachian. Yeah, but his whole aesthetic is like yeah, rundown cowboy. He's so yeah. well versed in that yeah. subject that he's well researched. Yeah, like you could if you say for Mass. You would never know he's from Mass, you know. So I mean, it's like it's like a- any uh, any horror auteur, any horror like real fucking powerhouse of horror. You look at where they're from, and they're just fucking regular people. Mm-hmm. Like horror comes from the mundane. Yeah. I think the only one that's horror where you can kind of tell just by watching the movies where he's from is fucking Brandon Cronenberg. <laughs> you watch crazy. Antiviral, you know it's Toronto. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You could you could see the like you could tell just by the way he directs. Yeah, it just it just screams Toronto his fucking movies. That's you know, funny. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. David not so much. Yeah. But I mean, still like, Canadian though. Still, still very Canadian, Canadian still but Canadian, yeah. Brandon, it's like you yeah. could tell this guy's like chilling on Spadina in fucking Toronto. You know? <laughs> it's Spadina. It's Spadina. It's Spadina. Yeah. It's Spadina. yeah. <laughs> He's, he's taking the TTC with his fucking camera to work every day. You know, terrible what I mean? logo too. What a uh, I think that yeah. the TTC terrible logo. Like? Yeah, it's dumb shit. Everything about Toronto. Right. I, I think that that, that brings the walk. that brings the monolith average to about an eight point five. Then this is a high rated movie for us. Oh yeah, very yeah, bro. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like we like we were saying, Halen, like we were saying, if five is average. It's definitely above average. Oh, eight point yeah. five is like yeah. Yeah, yeah. eight point five is a fucking amazing movie. Yeah, yeah. you know. I feel like horror in general plateaus itself so hard because they just play on the same tropes all the time. Mm-hmm. But yeah. this, I feel like, is that's shitty horror though. Breaking this is, boundaries. This is breaking yeah. boundaries, especially coming out of the early two thousands. Like this is like a cool movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, this is cool to watch now. So imagine the two thousand when this came out. You're like, holy fuck! Like mm-hmm. yeah. the the colors are flipped. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did I drink, dude? It's like you said, though, Dante. They didn't transcend the the genre. It's got a, It's got. A, it's got. It's not just for me. A nine can't just transcend the genre. Mm-hmm. That's a transcendent film. Right. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Right. Well, that's yeah. the cultural. 
This transcends yeah. genre. I think. I think this movie transcends horror Do you genre. Think so? Yeah, yeah. I think oh, so yeah? Too, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's so, it's like, so unique in its style. Yeah. Like I see, like there's a lot of movies that, like a lot of music videos too, like Slipknot videos, Corn yeah. videos that came out that look like this movie. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But this movie is the first one, mm-hmm. and it does it well. It does it tastefully. It's fucking good. Yeah. But I don't think this transcends genre as much as Devil's Rejects does. I think Devil's Rejects really? is much more. Popcorn, fucking sit down with the family and watch a spooky movie kind of thing. But, but I, I, I that's, that's, well, that, that's exactly why this one transcends genre. Yeah, because in terms of reputation, you think so? Oh yeah. Like oh, this, yeah, this, one, this one, this one, this one, like no. less known. I think so compared knew, to Devil's Rejects. I knew yeah, but Devil's Rejects is newer there. there. Thousand yeah, Thousand Corpses. Yeah. What did you say? I knew Devil's Rejects before Thousand Corpses. I, I think, think I wanted to. I think I wanted to watch Devil's Rejects first, and then Lee's yeah. like, "Okay, well, that's the second one we gotta watch the first. But also, yeah. also, I think, I think this this movie transcends that. genre. I mean, it doesn't transcend film, but it transcends genre because mm-hmm. when it came out, it got bad reviews. Okay. Now that it's had time to age, mm-hmm. people like this movie a lot more. They they appreciate it more because even today, people don't make movies like this, bro. No, they don't at all. Yeah. And people don't make horror movies like this. Mm-hmm. And very few horror movies come out that are like good like this that are like campy and now this is like a certified camp cult classic yeah, you know yeah. mm-hmm. this is like the pinnacle yeah. of of campy cult horror movies like if you want to watch if there's one horror movie you should watch that's campy cult if you had one of them to choose yeah. from it'd be this one in my opinion you know Slumber and just Party because Man. of that it transcends the yeah, genre Slumber, Slumber Party Party Slumber Slumber Party that's good. Good. That's a two movie. Two is retarded. <laughs> two is stupid. No, two is so much better than the first one. You fine? Yeah, oh yeah. Really? No, I like one more. Dude, that I like two one is more, what? Dude. Yeah. Two is, wait, are, are you mixing them up? No, no, two is too much for two me. Two is at the guitar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so much better. It's such no a better movie. Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's no so way. much fucking better. And even then, this is a way better movie than the Song of Power Massacre one. I think yeah. so too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think to me it transcends horror, not in a maybe Basket Case is like okay, the apex yeah. of like yeah, cult Basket campy, you know, or Twilight, yeah, yeah, the first true. Twilight movie. Yeah. yeah, that's true too. Though. But this yeah. is like yeah. if I could recommend someone one like gory horror movie that's culty, campy, fun, like real like chalet kind of movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This like Bad Boys movie, too, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, there's no better. Throw back to Robin. Yeah. There's, there's no better. Yeah, Robin. there's no better gas station. Uh, cabin, chalet, like mm-hmm. camping movie yeah. than Bad Boys Two. That's, that's just a yeah. fact, you know. What's What's so great about this movie is that like you're road tripping across America and mm-hmm. you're like at a hotel. They have a TV and a DVD player, but they don't have Netflix. You're like, fuck, what do I do? You run to the depth. You buy a random DVD, dude. You buy House of a Thousand Corpses. Yeah. You, you know, you know, you do. You buy, like you, so buy the, the, you buy the double disc House mm-hmm. of a Thousand Corpses and Bad Boys Two. Yeah, there, <laughs> there you go. Double feet, that double, double feature. feature for the Let's go. Dude. Borat on the side. You're <laughs> sick, dude. No, then you buy the one hot fuzz shot of the dead. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I think for me, when we talk about transcending a genre, to me, it's less about in, it's less about popularity and more it's not about, about popularity at all. It's more about what the movie is actually doing for the genre, for, okay. for the genre, and for yeah. itself. Like, I think okay. that Devil's Rejects might be more popular, but it doesn't It doesn't transcend the genre to me because it's just what it is. It's nothing mm. more than what it is. Okay. But yeah. House of a Thousand Corpses, to me, is genuinely greater than the sum of its parts. It is oh, more yeah. than just that's, a horror movie. Best way to put it. Best way to put it yeah. right there. But, yeah. but the Devil's Rejects, although still good, we'll talk about it when we watch it, mm-hmm. it is just a horror movie. Yeah. This is more, I think. I yeah. was thinking of it more like that's cultural, like uh, yeah, you know, relevance, right? You yeah, know, more, more yeah. of like I think like Halloween. Halloween. Yeah, Halloween is zeitgeist. Like it's no yeah. longer a movie. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, but I think yeah. I think House of, House of a Thousand Corpses is too, especially today. Yeah, maybe not five years I ago. Think it was a change though. today. Was a change yeah, it's a big before. change. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. 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 I'm what... thinking now of the difference between Devil's Rejects and A Thousand Corpses. Mm-hmm. Those cutaways and those. It's less style. Yeah, it's it less style. Yeah. It so Those much. cutaways yeah. reach towards something else that's not horror. Like, that's something that someone else could take yeah. meaning from. Be like, oh, this is really cool. Mm-hmm. Like, them foreshadowing what's going to happen versus what the newscaster is saying was happening at cheerleaders. Like, that's a cool detail that someone might not pick up that isn't necessarily part of horror. Yeah. But the Devil's Rejects is literally just slasher. Like, this, there's, there's mm-hmm. stuff in this movie that I haven't even seen in other movies at yeah. all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Since, like, and that's... And at all, like, at all. This is the he, only movie I've seen this shit in. And this is know? the first of his trilogy. Like, that's what's so cool about it. Yeah. Like, and the most important part is that it's done well. Yeah, dude. 
Because there's a lot of movies that do experimental risky it's bullshit, right? Yeah. That's so funny. But sometimes they just, they, you can see they're trying what, they, you can see what they're trying to do. Yeah. But they just don't execute it right. Right. Yeah. This one, it's like smooth, yeah. done right, it's tasteful, and it's even the really dumb shit is tasteful as fuck, you know? Yeah. 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 That's Which, why I'm confused why the second and third suck so hard. So yeah, we'll, we'll get there. So, yeah, yeah. These are so like well thought and so much yeah. like foreknowledge about the genre, about what has yeah. to be in it. So the, the average on Letterbox is a six and a half out of ten. Yeah, so the, the reviews weren't great. Just I think for like, normal overall. people, normal people, that's like a yeah. reasonable review. Yeah. It might be too flashy though. That's it what it's too. too much. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's too much style. But what are other horror movies yeah. that came out in two thousand? Like you well, got Saw or something. You got to think in context. Saw is the most structured, most matter of fact set up. The whole premise of it is set up. Like, the game maker set this whole movie I up. I mean, Saw... This, mm-hmm. Saw is a 7.2. That's oh, incredible, really? dude. It's not oh, yeah. that much more than House of a Thousand Corpses. I feel, okay, like, I feel like A Thousand Corpses has all the gore that Saw has, but it has more layers to it. Mm-hmm. To it's goofier. Appreciate. I'm not it's just, Saw's fucking good. Yeah, but it's less flat. Yes. Like, Saw is the other movie that... Saw, for sure, transcends horror. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, like, a very important Saw movie. also, yeah. in terms of style, is very unique. Yeah, in terms yeah. of editing, especially, yeah. they yeah. do a lot. They do a lot. They well, do a lot for, parody, for, yeah. for exactly for yeah. horror that's been adapted yeah. since. And so. I do, I do get the same vibe. Well, not the, really the same vibe. It's, they're very different vibes. But like Saw has this like normal American middle class kind of thing about it, where it's like in this bathroom and it's like this grimy bathroom. I get the same like feel with this movie a bit. Just this movie's more goofy and more colorful, you know. Mm-hmm. But I love that kind of like you know industrial kind of like yeah. clinical bathroom kind of grimy yeah. shit you know like so, I don't know how to des- describe this kind of thing you know Saw so I feel it's like American Tetsuo though that's yes. like how I yes. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. something like that like yeah. an American view yeah. on like I think it's more ca- it's more Catholic to me oh, Saw so, okay, so really, is yeah. very Catholic oh you find don't you oh yeah it's very much repent for your sins okay I gotta rewatch it then I mean, that's yeah like the, the plot but thematically as well. But visually, it's very textual. Like American oh, sure, textual. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, style. Yeah, yeah style. Style-wise, yeah. it's very Japanese. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fallen Angel. Yeah. Like, a lot of Japanese and Korean horror movies have that kind of, like, that kind of blue tint. Because yeah. punchy. Green and shit. And so, green and blue. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 They do all that. High tech. thousands, you know, the speed ramps yeah. and the zoom. Yeah. 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 All right, well, there you go. We got Julia in for the intro, for the yeah. outro. That's, that's, that's but yeah, I, I guess, sorry to cut you off, but no, I no, guess no. The, the thing is, like, from my, my personal ranking system, 10, it's got to transcend, like, culture. It's got to transcend everything, you know? Mm-hmm. Nine, got, it has to transcend film as a thing. Eight, it's got to transcend genre. Seven, it's got to be a good movie. Yeah. Six, it's like a decent movie above average, and five average, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 10 is like immaculate, I'm crying watching the movie. 10, it's, it's like, like 10, it's like, it's so it. important to... The world of art and culture that yeah. it's like ten. Ten monster. for me is personal. It's <laughs> ten. The diff, That's the difference between nine and ten for me. Nine is what you're talking about for me. A ten for me is ten for me is personal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ten is ten is, is something that means something to me. Yeah. As no, but I'm, try, I'm trying to think like objectively. You know, like yeah. for me, like but, Spirited yeah. Away is my favorite movie of all time. Yeah. It'd be it's a ten for me, but yeah. realistically, it's not. It's not a ten. Do you guys have a ten? But cult, yeah, we've, we've given. What do we give a ten? Culture does stop at nine. I think though. And 10 is all your relation to... That's what, that's what I'm saying, too. Yeah, yeah. I think no, so. But yeah. for me, t- 10, you have to be the best movie ever made, kind of 10 thing. is yeah. Heart of Glass, Killing with Chinese Bookie, and maybe Clockwork Orange for me. I, I figured you're Clockwork Those Orange guy. Three yeah. Those movies 10? I've seen in I don't remember what I gave a 10, but I, I think I gave... Um, Alien, you gave 9. I think I gave Alien a 9. I think nine. Blow, both Blade Runners are 10s. I think really? I mean, oh, yeah. 2001's a 10, that's for sure. Yeah. Eraserhead, I gave a 10. Eraserhead's yeah. a 10. yeah. yeah. Eraser ten was a ten. Eraser ten. Eraser head was a ten for me. Eraser. The Lord of the Rings trilogy is a ten. Oh, ha- Hondo P. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's and that's not even like in the individual. Just as a cinematic experience, like yeah. we were saying last time. Mm-hmm. It's just like it's it. Lord of the Rings. It's not like the greatest movie, most art house movie ever. Mm-hmm. But it transcends culture because, bro, Lord of the Rings is just so synonymous with our modern day culture. And it's what more yeah. than twenty years old. Yeah. Twenty years old movie now. Two thousand one. 2001, bro, and it's so. just so fucking good. Did I give Spring Breakers a 10? I don't think so, no. no? But maybe 9 something. It was high, Spring but Breakers I don't think that's right. Like, Parasite would be a 9. Rubber's a 10. I gave Rubber a 10. Maybe, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but a that's like that's, our, that's a model of 10. Rubber's you know? a fucking 10, dude. Rubber's a fucking 10. Like, what else would be a 10? I mean, uh, part of the glass, I'm crying watching the whole movie. 
Okay. It's too good. Dude. It's, it's too perfect. perfect. I'd it's say Seven perfect. Samurai is a 10. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know? Yeah. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Like, important to right. the culture. Yeah. Like, <laughs> important to world culture yeah. kind of movies. Yeah. And Lord of the Rings is definitely important to world culture. Yeah, like, right, every yeah. human has watched Lord of the Rings. Yeah. yeah. And not, not because it's like, you know, it's like, people listen to Little Wayne because it's super popular or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. Whatever fucking popular ass Marvel movies super popular. Mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings is even more popular. And it's amazing. That's yeah. how... It's so good, it's that popular. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So for me, that's why I had 10 Gabi, you know? Okay. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's fucking... Videodrome 10. Videodrome? Video, we haven't done it yet, but Videodrome's a fucking 10. Dude. Videodrome rules, though. Video our our, 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 our yeah, old... Video, our old rating... Videodrome tattoo on my Never fucking leg. Never seen the movie. <laughs> or no, you did you no, see No, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, dude, yeah. our old... We used to have a ra- old rating system that went out of Videodrome, remember? Yeah. Got yeah, a Cannibal Holocaust as a 10. Cannibal Holocaust rules. That's a Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah, yeah. Time. I think that's a, maybe a nine for me, but I haven't seen it enough times. Maybe Cannibal Holocaust. Cannibal Holocaust. Nine, Holocaust. nine and a half, something like that. It's perfect for what it is. Yeah, I think yeah. I gave Tetsuo. Tetsuo rocks. I think I may have Tetsuo given Tetsuo. Good. Yeah, I'm with you. But I couldn't rewatch Tetsuo every day. <laughs> Fuck, I could. Dude. Really? Yeah. I <laughs> fucking love that movie. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> I fucking love that movie. Well, that's been uh, yeah. House of the Corpses <laughs> by Rob Zombie, <laughs> by Rob Zombie, yeah. featuring Halen, yeah. John, whatever the fuck your last name is, I always forget. Nicholson, there you go. You want to plug anything? Follow me on Instagram. What's your Instagram? Model of Film Podcast. Hey, hey, hey yo. Yo. Bing, wow. bing, 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 bing. Yeah, what's up? You there could you check go. us out anywhere you get your podcasts. Follow us on Instagram, YouTube, all that bullshit. If you want, we're gonna come up with a merch drop soon. New shit. You get crazy merch, so sign up for our merch shops. Follow us on Instagram to find out more details, all right? Hey, I'm, I'm going to say this, dude. If, you, if you've listened to our fucking podcast this deep into the episode, and you aren't interacting with our content, there's something wrong with you. you Comment, true. True. Like, stupid, like, subscribe, share, do fucking something. It's Julia, featuring Julia. Do something. Too. Yeah. Anyways. And uh, we'll be back uh, next week with um, Poor Things. Yeah, hey, yeah not teaser. confirmed. But well, maybe, not confirmed, yeah, but we're probably. trying to get poor things on. Yeah. If you guys have any recommendations for movies you want us to review, put it in. Uh, yeah. Send us however you want to get at that information to us. Do it, right? Instagram, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, YouTube. Send us an, a message on the uh, MSN Messenger, okay? Uh, AOL, I gotta go. In the, uh, in the meantime, <laughs> 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 alright, peace. Oh, no, this is